Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Today is December 4th, a Monday, a Metal Monday. December 4th, almost up this year. Where does all the time go? Time just flies by. That year just whipped by. I can't believe it. It feels like it was just Y2K. Man, I go, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, as cliche as that does sound, time does fly, man. It just goes fucking... I was reading this thing, David Cassidy. His last words were, so much wasted time, and that socked me in the gut. Like, oh, fuck. Don't waste time, man. It goes by. It goes by. I can't even believe it. Wednesday, uh, what is it? It's December 6th on Wednesday. It's going to be eight years I'd, I've been doing stand-up. Eight years ago on Wednesday, I stepped on the stage first time ever and did stand-up comedy. And I can't believe it's been fucking eight years. Man, eight years, five and a half years doing the podcast. It all just seems like, I don't know, it all seems like about four or five years, not eight years. That's probably why I'm tired all the time. I'm like, wow, I don't sleep at all. Anyway, time does fly, as cheesy as that sounds. Get out there and do what you want to do, man. You know, don't waste time. Don't be afraid to fail. Fuck it, man. I fail every day, you know? Stand up. God, I got so many ups and downs, it's not even funny. But, you know, you just just get out there and you do it. Make sure you enjoy what you're doing in life. My guest today enjoys what he's doing, that's for sure. He's been playing professional music, professional music. (laughs) That's something your dad would say. You know, my son, he's been playing professional music. My other son plays professional lawyer. (laughs) Anyway, my man Larry, Larry, you know and love him. Primus is here also from possessed we cannot forget about that some of you might not know but early on he was in a little uh death metal band called possessed that was absolutely awesome and uh so early on in that whole world of uh the bay area thrash scene this guy wins he wins he's been playing music all his life he's been doing art forever and not only uh, all his life, but phenomenal stuff. That is just fucking next level to me. I've said it over and over. Go see Primus. I've seen him three times just this year alone. Every time I go, it's a full blown art explosion. Just amazing, man, this band. And we need them now more than ever. I just love seeing somebody so outside the box. So many great records. The brand new record, Smokes. I've been saying it over and over. Get it. And here's something you might want to get if you're a uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory fan. They did the uh, soundtrack to that back in 2014. They did their own version of that, Primus and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, find out what it sounds like for them to do like Golden Ticket. I've got a golden ticket. I love it. I love these guys. I'm going to go see them. They're playing uh, two nights in December at the Will Turn and one night New Year's Eve at the Fox in Oakland. Go support these guys. If you've never seen them, it'll just blow your mind. And this interview was so much fun to sit down and just reminisce about old school Bay Area and all that music scene out there, man. So underrated San Francisco Bay Area in the music world they've got so much so much uh wealth of of rock and roll and funk and metal and uh country everything out there man you get it all out there and we sit down and talk about it larry is just an amazing man and i can't thank him enough for doing the podcast uh let's see get into a couple things i just got back from uh, albuquerque and tucson this weekend with bill burr thank you bill i absolutely love you for all your help in the eight years of me doing stand-up comedy i cannot thank you enough man you are the uh between you and mark Marin, man you guys are my uh, gps in uh the comedy life man making sure i don't uh steer off in any dead ends and uh bumpy roads 
and all that shit. I love you, Bill. It was a great weekend. Man, I hadn't been to Albuquerque in years. My mom lived there for a few years, and I still feel like I haven't been there in years because I was only there probably about eight hours. We just flew in, did a show at the casino. I uh, forget what casino. What was it? Route 66. Great room. Giant fucking room. Oh, my God. This thing was huge. Held like 3,000. And, um, and then we went to sleep, woke up, flew to Tucson, and rocked the uh, Diamond Casino there or something like that. And then home. Just a fucking tornado. I, I, somebody was asking me, hey, man, what, how many uh, shows you've been doing with Burr? And, man, it's just a blur. The Bill Blur Tour. <laughs> That's what it should be called. The Bill Blur Tour. Because it's a blur, man. Because we just fly into these spots. Which, by the way, that's how I hooked up with Larry and the Primus guys because we did that uh, Austin City Limits show and then stayed to see Primus. Uh, fucking just an epic weekend. I've had so many great weekends with Bill, you know. Uh, I just Anyway, thank you, Bill. This week I'll be in Sacramento with my man, another, another uh, uh, master in my GPS here, Joey Diaz. Also... Show me the ropes and the maps and the roads and the uh, and the uh, do's and don'ts of podcasting and stand up. Joey Diaz, love them. We will be together at the punchline this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Couple tickets left. Love it, man. Then uh, La Jolla. I'm coming back to you. My first dates in 2018. La Jolla Comedy Store, this, uh, January. 12th, 13th, 14th. Amazing. Uh, thank you to my sponsors. I love you guys. Got great sponsors. El Cajon Harley. El Cajon Harley, my fantastic motorcycle sponsor. Hit them up at ElCajonHarley.com. Somebody just hit me up. They're going to buy a CVO from uh, Greg and the boys. Thank you for getting your motorcycle at El Cajon Harley. Uh, they got all kinds of great stuff going on for Christmas right now. Like they got an incredible service deal going. Spend 500 or more on accessories, get 20% off your uh, labor, which is a great deal. Uh, they also have 10% off any stage two kits. If you want your bike to be screaming fast, you want to burn motherfucking rubber, dude. You want a wheelie like the kids on Instagram with the high bars being rock stars. Go to El Cajon Harley. Their 12 days of Christmas kicks off on uh when does that kick off let me look here 12 days of christmas december 5th through december 16th all kinds of great deals going on at el cajon harley my other sponsor since i know a lot of musicians will be listening to this episode because of my man lair lair on the guitar um it's Earthquaker Devices. Earthquaker Devices, the finest stomp boxes, stomp pedals in the world. You want to get yourself a stomp box so you sound cool. I'm looking at some of the names here, and uh, I'll try to, uh, try to guess their uh, sounds. Get yourself a hummingbird pedal. I think that sounds like this. I don't know what the fuck that is, but that's a hummingbird. hummingbird. Ghost Echo. Goose deco, goose deco, cloven hoof, get the hoof or the cloven hoof. I don't even know what that would sound like. The organizer, I don't know what that sounds like because I'm never organized. Anyway, get yourself an earthquaker device, handmade in. Uh, Devo, Ohio, Akron, Ohio. Go to EarthquakerDevices.com. Get yourself a stomp box. Stomp it out. And while you're doing that, get yourself a brand new custom built guitar from my man, Carson. Yes. You want to get a black guard for Christmas? A 52 Telly style smoking rock machine. Go to Carson Hess. Hit him up on Instagram. He custom builds the finest blackguards and Stratocasters in the world on the planet. Carson Hess, uh, 81. 
on Instagram. Hit him up. Tell him I sent you. I've been putting photos of his guitars in my uh, feed. What a King Kong artist. Uh, I'm kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy today because I just uh, lack of sleep, but I want to get this podcast out to you guys. I love you. If you want to donate to the podcast, go to patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Every nickel counts. I love all you guys. Let's keep the candles lit. Please spread the word on this podcast. Come out, support my live shows and uh, keep the love going on. Don't forget to leave a review and subscribe. I love you all. Thank you for eight years of uh, support on my stand-up comedy. Here he is right now. Let's rock a little Primus. All right, all right, all right. Here we are, another episode of Let There Be Talk. Man, this is a great guest right here, a Bay Area god. Introduce yourself. Oh, hi. This is David Lee Roth from Van Halen. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> it's funny, I... Um, well, introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's a lure from Primus. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? How are you, bud? It's, I'm good, man. It's so cool to have you on. Um, I just had a comedian on, uh, Dub Davidoff, and he uh, he rented, he owns buildings in New York, and he rented to Diamond Dave. Really? Yeah, so he said they would just kind of kick it. It was a three-story building. They'd kick it on the in the back patio. <laughs> and and my boy wasn't like a, a Van Halen guy at all. So he had no idea. Well, well, he he knew who he was because um, Dave's uncle owned Cafe Wa, uh, and 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 Dove the comedian would do the uh, the comedy cellar every night right next door. But he wasn't like in awe. Like if oh, we, yeah, I, if our neighbor was Diamond Dave. Oh, dude! You, I, you I know never, I mean? When I was a kid, we used to like sit around like in high school. And go, I wonder if we'll ever meet anybody from Van Halen. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Yet to happen, too. By the way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, that's crazy. You I never know. met. Wow. I uh, opened some shows for Diamond Dave. No way. Yeah, yeah, on his solo band. You know what I mean? Like, way, you know, Trocadero, remember that place? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then Canocti Harbor. Dude, Inn. I know Canocti Harbor well. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Primus ever played Canocti? No, no. I didn't think so. You guys are too. You, that, that's strictly for Bodax, you know? Yeah, it was always like the place where you'd see Boston back before. You know, now Boston's yeah. kind of cool to see it, but back, you know, where you'd see like 70s bands and probably it was only one original guy. Well, it's a straight mustache rock. So it'd yeah, be like. Yeah. It'd be like a bunch of bands with like no original members. Exactly, know? yeah. It's the roadie for Marshall Tucker. You know? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's yeah. Foreigner, but you've never recognized any of the guys' names. Yeah, well, Foreigner, they're out touring. Sometimes there's no original guys. Is that what it is? Because we run into them around the world. Like, we'll be in like Germany and like, oh, Foreigner's in the hotel. And I'm like, all right. They're yeah. a little young to be a foreigner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, right. Yeah, like, well, those guys are in shape. Yeah, wow, they must have really kept <laughs> clean living, man. Foreigner's underrated, you know? Like, I always try to uh, stuff them down Bill Burr's throat. Oh, yeah. There's some good foreigner shit, man, you know? They wrote the shit out of some hits. I don't know why they don't get um, glory. I think because they had that, I want to know what love is. Yeah, they did like the sort of, like, you know, the second wave of their career where it was like the ballads and stuff right this sucks yeah rightly so it's a lot like you too now you know what i mean like boy they have fucking some monumental records but if you listen to you two now you're like yeah what's the big deal if you were just some new guy yeah you're like what's the big deal uh joshua (laughs) tree octung baby you know you, you know it's funny man um you guys toured with you two. We did. Which what was, record was that? That was Zoo Radio Tour. Oh, in that the was football stadium. Dude, that was a great tour. It was. That it had was, the lemon on the side, or no? Zoo Radio it had was the cars. Is the cars it, floating? It was massive. Whatever. It was. Yeah, the oh. cars floating, and it was you know. Did you do Oakland on that one? No, we didn't. That was Public Enemy did that one, but it was so oh, weird. Right. We went to the show, and you know, and just, Sugar Cubes. Is that, was it? I wow, think. That, I mean, that could have been. I think right. it was Sugar Cubes and Public Enemy. I went to that. Took mushrooms. <laughs> I think it's still one of the best tours ever because it was half Octung, half Zuropa. You know right. what I mean? Like they were still like in that uh, Octung kind of tour. He was the fly. They had right. the Mini Coopers flying. Yeah, Mini Coopers, yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, I had no idea because I was at that point. I mean, I've gone back since and I listened to some U two stuff, but at the time, U two was one of those bands you. I didn't need to get into them because everywhere you went, they were on. Like we yeah. started that tour, I'd never owned a U two record. I never deliberately listened to it, but I knew every song. Yeah, and I was totally into it. I knew every word, every like. I'm like, I was like, you know, it was like seeing a band that I would grown up with, but I'd never, you know, they're just everywhere you went. I, I wonder if they were like the Stones because um, the Stones, 
especially around 02, 03, 04 when they're out there on the road. Uh, I think that mixed kids who were big hipsters and uh, in New York scene and stuff were recommending what bands to get them. Like they were getting the White Stripes, right. the Strokes, the Yeah, Yeah, Yes. I wonder if somebody was doing that for them back then because how did you guys get on the tour? Because look, Sugar Cubes and uh, Public Enemy. Yeah, I think, well, we got on because Jimmy Iovine. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Interscope. And, you know, he produced some of their records. It was, you know, his buddies with them. So I think it was like, hey, can you put these guys on? I don't think anyone went like, hey, we should put Brian yeah. on there. <laughs> what was that like where people just stare? I mean, those are weird anyway. People are just coming oh, in. Yeah, basically it was daytime. It was basically us playing. It was kind of like, you know, if you're playing in some like- Sound check. Yeah, it was a sound check with people trying to find their seats and going like, what the hell is this music? Like, <laughs> you know, and it, you know, you're in a football stadium. So. Yeah. But the cool thing we decided is like, we'd go try to find the, uh, the helmet that they would cart off the guys from the NFL. Like if you broke your knee, they used to bring those carts out where you know oh yeah the half helmet yeah, yeah so that became our goal like you know kind of a little side to, mission let's go to drive that helmet. around well yeah we never got to drive him but we'd find like everybody you know find like a, the building manager and be like dude where's the helmet he'd be like oh yeah cool it's over here how many uh dates did you guys do with him uh, we must have done like i don't know maybe 20 or something wow you did a fucking lot it's of like them. a month or you know That's i mean amazing. the first gig was giant stadium wow yeah was that your first stadium actual shows in life yeah, I mean, we may have done like the, you know, the radio shows like in D.C. and stuff that were like massive, you know, the football stadiums. But yeah, I think so, for sure. I know. mean, thinking back, because we grew up in uh, Oakland, those day on the greens, you know, totally. it's always a dream like to to be able to do one of those day on the greens. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, to actually go out on a monumental U2 tour. Uh, you know, that was a, a, a groundbreaker for me too. Cause I remember taking mushrooms at that show and really feeling like, Whoa, man, I, I understand what this guy's saying right now. I get it. It makes sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> now go, this is bullshit stadium rocks. Like, no, I get it. Yeah. It's funny because as, uh, Bill Burr and I recently saw you guys in Austin, uh, and Burr, I remember on the podcast that, well, well not even on the podcast. As we got to the airport, he, he, we're sitting there at like five in the morning. He goes, uh, man, what are mushrooms like? <laughs> That's not, he was just like sitting there because I think he was thinking, if I could see Primus on mushrooms, I think it would be like pretty spiritual. Yeah, he yeah. mentioned that after the show. And he, yeah. he's kind of like, oh, I feel kind of like I'm on drugs, but without the drugs. So yeah. He was taking the next leap of, well, what if I was on drugs? Then what would happen? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's funny because you and I were talking at that sound check, and I really, uh, I thank God that I, I grew up in the Bay Area because the insanity of different music there, it, it, it's beyond melting pot. It's so crazy yeah. to think about. If you look at like Tom Waits, uh, Primus, Faith No More, The Grateful Dead, Metallica, uh, just those, let's just say, yeah. just those five. And that's just scratching the surface. Scratching you know? the surface. I'm just saying about how different every one of those bands are, and none of them are built for radio or your, uh, your standard uh, pop band or uh, what a record company would understand to sign. Right. You know, and, and a lot of the, if you look at those bands, they're self-made. They were, yeah. they were put together and they're not put together in a way of like, well, let's get a band together and get famous. Right. Yeah, it's, it wasn't like a business decision or like, oh, we're going to do, yeah. It, kind yeah. Of, it seems like they got together because they, well, probably I was trying to figure this out recently. Like, why is the Bay Area like that? Because there's no place else like it. And I always thought there was till I started venturing out. I'm like, oh, no, this is a specifically a Bay Area thing. And yeah, I think I'm, it seems like part of it might have been just there's, you know, it kind of snowballed. There's bands. All of a sudden now there's, you know, there's Santana and that turned into Journey. Yep. And, you know, there's Jefferson Airplane and. At the same time, all these bands were building studios, so that was another thing. When we were starting, there was no, you know, there was tons of studios you could actually go and record at, where if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, I don't know where you'd have to go. Right. To get to a yeah, because you, now you just do it in your house on the computer. <laughs> yeah, you but go to yeah, Best Buy in the morning. And you're you have right. Yeah, actually, day. I never even really thought about that. Like, if you lived in fucking bunfucked Egypt, where do you go? Most of the time, you'd go to the college Right. They would have a recording school. <laughs> yeah, you, you ever do those? Like my buddy would take recording. He'd go, hey, I got the studio time. We got to go in at midnight. And you go in at midnight to like 6 a.m. and record a four song demo. <laughs> we, we never did that one, but, uh, but I've seen that. I yeah. Know people who have. Yeah. 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 Now, it's, it's funny because when I really think about you, uh, even pre Primus, I think about the ground zero of that thrash metal scene. You know, of course, you're playing Possessed. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, what, what was it? Burn the churches? Or, so seven se- churches. Yeah, seven churches. <laughs> that just, fucking record was incredible. Yeah, I was 15, I think, when we recorded that. 15? Yeah. 15. Man, <laughs> you know, like, when you think about those early days in the Bay Area, I think about them, of just hanging out in, like, you know, at Berkeley Square or the Stone or, or uh, the Omni. Yeah, Ruthie's. You know, Ruthie's in. <laughs> and you think about these... Um, you know, like even the after parties, how oh dark it was, you know, like you got like Exodus and, and Metallica possessed, uh, laws rocket, uh, the mentors, the mentors on yeah. occasion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then of course, merciful fate, not from there, but you know, that whole thing, yeah. it was so dark and, and new and crazy, man. It's, yeah. it's wild to think about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you nailed it right there. That's so it was, it was dark and crazy. And it really it was, was fun at the same time. Yeah. And exciting. But, I yeah. think a lot of it was geared on crystal meth too. Like Absolutely. people, people yeah. never really talk about that. And I've talked about it over and over, but there was a massive amount of crystal oh meth. Oh and yeah. I think that fueled the speed metal. <laughs> you know what I mean? A hundred percent. I haven't, I, now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Because it's, I think you're right. Yeah. I think luckily I was too, I avoided it for the most part cause I was too young. I didn't know any better. Right. But yeah, God, there was a shitload of crystal meth around. Now, now it makes sense with the speed metal, you know. It was just normal. It was literally speed metal. You just metal. get a bump and you played all night. Just <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That just, was a crazy. I'm so glad you were there for all that because it's hard to like to describe to people what that was oh, actually like, you know? Uh, I mean, I, you know, I often, I, I went to the Metallica 30 year anniversary and at the uh, Fillmore, they did those like five right. nights or whatever. And a lot of people always ask me what my favorite band is. And, and you know, for years, ACDC and, of course, Zeppelin. But as I sat in that room and and watched uh, Metallica come on, you know, 30 years. Here we are 30 years later. I think back to those early days. And there's just, you know, those guys... And you and Faith the More still playing. And I'm thinking, like, you beat all the odds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's just, if you look at it on paper, you go, no way. The, the yeah. style of Primus or Metallica, you know, Primus especially, it's just so outside the box. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that whole thing back then, especially when the metal thing, it, it, it was mostly about, like, there's no way this music, it's such an uphill battle. This, there's no way it's going to get to where it got now. You never, you kind of, Metallica was a couple leaps ahead, so you thought maybe, because you could see people grabbing on, but, like, the satanic stuff, and, yeah. you know, and you didn't want to, the whole thing was, I'm not a poser, so it was almost like, the reason yeah. you did the Satan, Satan stuff was like, well, look, we're not trying to be famous, we're not trying to be glam, yeah. we're not, we're not uh, poisoned, like, we're, yeah. we're showing you that we have no interest in being famous or rich we're just gonna sing about satan as heavy yeah. as we can i mean that <laughs> that possessed record is you know of course we got slayer too i, I left that out because it was la but yeah, they, well they kicked off the whole yeah that, that whole black big metal time thing, man know? big time and, and when you listen to possessed you know that had to be pretty bizarre you're 15 right yeah and you guys are playing like gigs are, are your parents like what's going on with our kids because me it seems like parents were just like yeah they're just having oh, fun oh they had no idea what was going on yeah they, they really didn't know what was which is so crazy because i have kids i can't imagine my kids at ruthie's at my age like, yeah hanging out in the parking lot drinking and then singing about satan and <laughs> <laughs> yeah right you know. like like if you look at merciful fate it's like see you T nuns have no fun. You're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's a, and they must have seen these records in my room, I would imagine. Yeah. You know? Pentagrams and upside down crosses. Yeah. And a record vault was just the oh, fucking, record vault. Dude, oh. that was like the Mecca. Right? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but, but the thing about record vault too was like, it was hard to get to if you didn't have a car. Yeah, it was because it was on that other end of Polk yeah, Street. Didn't go anywhere near. No. I didn't know how to take the bus. It was like, take Bart to like Mission Street and skate. Yeah. across mountains and then yeah somehow you, were, get home. you were a skater right yeah that's why i got everywhere yeah i didn't yeah. know how to take the bus i had no idea how to take the bus i know it sounds you, ridiculous but what era no i'm 51 so what era are you back then are you like the the dogtown guys no like, i'm two years behind you two so years i was be- like you know most of the it was like whatever berkeley whatever the skate scene there was like right. most of the punk bands were coming from like new york Oh yeah, oh yeah, like uh, Chromags and all yeah, that. Chromags oh. and Token Entry and that Chromags record is still. 
that thing's like like GNR for rock, you know? <laughs> that <Right>. Chromax <laughs> record. Is, that was like the crossover. Uh, oh, oh, it really is. That thing is held at the, the top of all time, yeah. you know what I, I mean? I think they're still going, right? Or am I thinking of someone else? Who, who were the other... There was a bunch of those New York bands. Yeah, yeah, time. you had, uh, what was the, uh, well, GBH, but they weren't New York. But uh, yeah, that New York hardcore, man, yeah. was just so, but that Agnostic thing, Front. <laughs> Agnostic Front. Yeah, I, I used to see them all at the River Theater. Oh, that's right. Remember yeah, the River yeah. Theater? Oh, yeah, totally. Did you play there in Possess? Tons, yeah, yeah. That, every band I was in played the River Theater. Yeah, right. You know, you'd go up there and half the time it would just be coming be out of a flood. Yeah. <laughs> The, the River Theater is so iconic. I mean, like, if you look at all these shows I saw there, Cro-Mags, uh, GBH, Agnostic Front, Death Angel, you know, yeah. uh, all that stuff, man. And it would just be, how about the drive there? You'd be drunk on this long road <laughs> like you were going to manage the Shining Hotel. Yeah, totally. You're on this long, long how road. Just, people survive that? Just drinking the whole way. Oh, yeah. Hours from San Francisco. Hours. Yeah. Hours. Hours from any help. Yeah, it's a dangerous road. Even sober now, if you drove on it, you'd be like, this is dangerous. Oh my God, it's crazy, man. <laughs> River Theater. Those, you know, those venues, like the, uh, I just had Tom Gaffey on the show uh, where you guys did your uh, video. Jerry was a race car driver. Is oh, that, yeah. Yeah, that's the one you guys did there, right? I was think. there. Uh, yeah, that's the one with the nachos, right? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I love your memory. Do you smoke weed? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that weed will knock your memory. Yeah, I bet back then I definitely did. I'm but sure my stone, we were making that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my memory it, it gets pretty foggy. You know yeah. what I mean? I think if you, uh, they say, "Well, you're getting old." I think if you live the fuck out of your life, it's hard to capture all those memories. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Well. It's Somehow I'm known as the guy in the band who remembers everything. I don't, maybe everybody else doesn't remember anything, but yeah. But yeah, right now I'm, re I'm remembering all this stuff, which is surprising because I've been the River Theater. I totally forgot about it. Oh, you know what I mean? but I was that was like a huge part of my life. All that. Yeah, stuff, right. You know? These yeah. venues, Ruthie's in. Yeah, the Stone, River Theater, Phoenix Theater, and then um, what would be another crazy one? I guess that's really that the was, ones. Yeah. Those. Oh no, Mabuhe. 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 Oh we, my god. We missed that. That was like punk rock club. Right. Like, we, we had no part of that because right. it was scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was as a, much as death metal was scary. Like we'd look across the street, you know, because the stone they were right across the street, right across the street from each other. Rock. Yeah. And there'd be the metal guys, you know, with the spikes and the black leather. And across the street was like the plaid tied around the waist with the mohawk. Skinheads. And, skinheads. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen some crazy shit go down with skinheads. Yeah. Eating people, you know. That was that. that <laughs> was scary. Uh, I remember that sometimes some bottles would whiz over from there. Oh, and yeah. they would be like posers. Yeah. Like if there was glam bands playing, they would just, <laughs> a bottle would just come out of nowhere. And you'd be like, what the fuck? Really? Oh, yeah. Because they were crazy over there. That guy that owned it, Ness. Ness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He just passed, I guess, about a year ago. Right, I heard it something about that. But that whole fucking street was made, made it. Remember Rock on Broadway? Yeah, Rock on Broadway. Yeah. Played man. there a bunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, Possessed, you're Rock and Possessed in and then, uh, you know, you end up joining up with uh, Les and doing Primus. My thing is, as I, I, was, I did some reading on you early on, you were into Garcia, like Jerry yeah. Garcia. Like well, how after you, that. Oh, after that. Yeah, well, what, kind of what it was, what's, when you said how it's kind of that scene was kind of dark and crazy. In the yeah. Whole, so, you know, I think that was such a short time. I was 15 when we did that Possessed record. And I think by the time I was 18, I was like, I was ready for the extreme other thing. So that's when it turned in. And I was getting into like the dead and like King yeah. Crimson, like, you know, the proggy King Zappa and Zappa. How'd you get into that shit? Just like you, you, you got an older brother or something or just um, getting stoned. Well, Zappa like, was the weed dealer guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> go know, over there. Yeah. So he bought, you know, back in the day you would buy a stereo. It was a big deal. So yeah. he had money. To yeah. buy a stereo because he's a weed dealer. Yeah, yeah, like a Macintosh or or that, the Morans. It was right? probably, yeah, it was probably like a Morans, you yeah. know, brand new that you'd go to the mall and buy. It was like, you know, maybe a grand or something. Yeah. He put it on, he put on this Zappa song, Dumb All Over. Yeah. Which has Zappa, this really like low vocal. And it was just like, oh my God, what is it? Just sounded insane. So I went, you know, went to the Hilltop Mall the next day and bought a Frank Zappa. Hilltop right? Mall. Hilltop Mall. Dude, I lived, I lived at those condos there. No way. Yeah, right there, the Hilltop uh, condos. Yeah. 
That Hilltop Mall is so weird, right? It's the weirdest. That's where I grew up in that mall. My mom worked at Macy's and wow. used to buy records in the Macy's and Hilltop Mall. You know what's crazy about the Hilltop Mall is, okay, they got the Everything. Con- yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it really is, man. You got the condos in front of it and then the Hilltop Mall, but behind it, all the way to the Richmond Bridge, yeah. is a desolate fucking a no man's land. Yeah. Of like the weirdest shit going on that's out right. there. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a bizarre scene, man. It's an insane scene. It's frightening. Yeah, yeah. it really is crazy out there. You grew up in, the, in Richmond. Well, I grew up, if you went right, if you were north of the Hilltop Mall, there's Pinole. Oh, I know Pinole. Why does Pinole have accents? Uh, like, what, is it like a, like a country? Like, it is. Like, hey, what's up, man? What's up with that? Dude, I don't know. My, my bass player grew up in Pinole, really? Joey, and everything be like, oh, man. Dude, that's, oh, I, this, this is what's scary about it. What it the was, fuck is up with that? It was like that? you lived in the deep south, like when it was like, you know, people try, you know, I'd have people chase me. We're going to cut your hair. Yeah. And I'd be like, where the fuck are we? Like, Berkeley's 10 miles down the road. Isn't that fucking. It was insane, dude. Isn't was, that crazy? Yeah. It really is. I don't hillbilly. know what that is. I have no idea what that is, but you nailed it. That was a real thing. Wow. We call them Chets because they kind of remind us of like Chet from Weird Science. Oh, man. Chets. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a great name. Man, a bunch of Chets. Long yeah, with, yeah, long with Bill Paxton, by the way. A friend of my man. Oh, like, really? Yeah, he was Chet. Oh, oh my God. God. What a God. Chets. Yeah, Pinole is really bizarre. And those are pockets of meth for sure. Uh, uh, oh, absolutely, man. 100%. I, I, I'm all spun out on meth right now because I, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> I, I mean, I just watched this documentary last night on HBO called Meth Burst or something. Let like. me guess. There's no success stories. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want to go down a dark rabbit hole, watch that. It is the scariest documentary I've ever seen on imagine. drugs. Because well, the shit makes people absolutely crazy. Wow. There's this whole town in Arkansas or Alabama, one of the two, I forget, uh, where Walmart came in. And after 10 years, they go, oh, we're not making enough money out here and just fucking left. Well, in that 10 years, every mom and pop thing had just gone out of business because of Walmart, and now there's nothing there. Right. It just so the whole town down. is meth. The whole fucking that's, town. That's what's so crazy when those, those stories where these people, they pull out of these towns, and then everyone just gets on meth. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> Yeah, right? <laughs> like, there's nothing worse than being on meth and having nothing to do. Exactly. That's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Like, maybe you guys shit on weed, then at least you'd be like, oh, I don't know. I'll look at this tree for a while. Yeah. Meth, like, what the <laughs> meth, fuck? They're, they're cleaning their fucking tr- their trailer, and, and there's <laughs> nothing in it. It's spotless, though. Wow, man. So you, you start getting into the prog stuff, and because my point is, um, you know, like as I'm in that same time, I'm not really fucking around with Prague. I do worship Devo at that time. Oh, but to me, I mean, Devo, you're a skater. Were you into Devo? Uh, I was into Devo when I at first, that's another one. The first time I saw a picture of Devo, I was scared. It was like a live shot, I think, from the stone, actually. Oh, yeah, and they were like wearing like tinfoil or something. I was oh. like, geez, this is. It just looked like nuts. Looked yeah. Like- I can't believe you were scared <laughs> of shit and you were in possessed. I know. I know. That's what's so funny. <laughs> well, that, well, you know, the whole possessed thing was like literally kids were like, oh, if we sing about Satan, people are freaked out and they're scared yeah. of us and we're, you know, they'll leave us alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was the blueprint of um, possessed? Was it really just kind of. Um, of like Exodus, the Bailoff Exodus era, because it, it's pretty similar, but it's darker like Slayer. But uh, was it just, was that the influence? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was Slayer, obviously. And yeah. I'd come to the band after they sort of had their thing set. It was like the satanic thing and the, right. the leather and the spike. So I kind of came in right at the end, right before they made the first record. So I wasn't that instrumental in like On the forming sound. the whole thing. But, right. um, but yeah, and it was just about, let's see how extreme we can be in every aspect. You know? just, yeah. Because I listen to it sometimes, like, Jesus Christ, it's weird music. It's like all all over the place it's kind of spastic and well that's what's cool. are weird and it's like oh it sounds like we're on speed i mean you've been playing weird music all your life yeah i try to pitch <laughs> you know what i mean and 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 to me it's uh it, it's it's a lot like my uh comedy taste my comedy is you know i'm rock and roll for sure or whatever but i love guys like you know let's say um uh, that are totally outside the box of course you know, these guys that you watch in comedy and you're like, what is going on here? <laughs> and that is a lot like uh, Primus. You know, when it first came around, I was just kind of like, whoa, how do you like, how do you 
even approach music like that when Les comes at you and you guys are writing songs are you writing songs with him or does he write all the songs and then you just go I'll put this stuff there because how do you approach that uh, I mean the probably the, the basic formula is like but in the beginning it was sort of like we just kind of jam or everyone would, everyone kind of write their part right and so you kind of mix it together and just be a mishmash kind of the sort of the, maybe the way it sounds but it, a little more planning that, but it yeah. was kind of like there was no boundaries. It was like, okay, we'll just play something crazy sounding and just kind of, I don't know, just try to innovate, I think, for the most part, which is yeah. probably the thing with everything, as far as my interest, like Possessed or whatever I did, was sort of innovating, like, let's not do what everybody else is doing. Let's try to have a new sound or something. But, you know, we were into bands like The Residents and stuff. Who, oh, there was yeah. nothing that sounded like The Residents. Right. So we're like, oh, let's do, let's try to have our own sound. You know, it's like, so I think a lot of it, the genesis was like, how do we have our own sound? How do we do something that's like not been done? Yeah. To some extent, because it's hard to do something that hasn't totally been done. But. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's the uh, whole thing, the whole key to life, you know? Like, uh, I mean, of course, Andy Kaufman to me is the god <laughs> right. of that style of comedy. And I look at a lot of music in that Andy Kaufman form of like, well, how do you even come up with this? You know, because I come from that structure of especially ACDC or Van Halen. You know, it's verse, chorus, verse, you know, bridge, right. you know, and then out chorus and a solo or whatever, you know. So, I mean, I just respect it so much because I love... I love where it takes my mind, it, you know, yeah. a lot like a Tom Waits record, like where, let's say, Bone Machine or, or Meal Variations, not the early stuff, but that stuff particularly, where you're like, man, this is fucking some great outside-the-box shit, you right. know? Well, see, I think that's the thing that's with music is you look at, like, pop bands and stuff, and I always, people tell me, oh, there's this great band, it's a great band, and I'll sort of, like, I'll hear it, I'm like, well, I don't get what's great about it, but I think for a lot of people right don't, they don't like it to be challenging they want it to be warm and fuzzy they know what's coming right. there's nothing that goes like oh i don't know what this is or uh. yeah so for me that's i think always like even back to like zeppelin and stuff when i first heard it, i was like oh this is really sort of challenging me in a way of like oh what is this it's kind of it feels cool but it's a little bit off a little bit which yeah like good. achilles last stand yeah you know when you hear that uh once you get past their blues stuff you know um you're just kind of like wow man and and I think with music, it comes in two categories for me. One is, does the band have songs? Right. Okay? Uh, as far as standard, God, that's a great song. Something that maybe after you hear it, it kind of sticks with you. Right. And, and just legendary songwriting. Like, to me, let's say, like, uh, you know, uh, Love Them or Hate Them, Springsteen. Let's say Born to Run. You know, you're right. like, well, that's a fucking song, you <laughs> know? But then there's another box to me that is like, you know because songs make you feel they right. really dig up memories and and a lot of people that say there's no good music anymore i always say well you're just you're just relating to music to a memory of when you had freedom and no bills and, right, and you're kind of nostalgia yeah you're getting high romanticizing <laughs> yeah. right but in the same box primus how does this make me feel? And it makes me feel artistic like uh, uh it, it, it inspires me to be different in a, in a different way as, as far as a human and stuff, as corny as that sounds, same way the Grateful Dead does now. Well, it sounds to good to me. I, yeah. It sounds like a great but, compliment. But I'm saying, no, I'm saying, you know what I mean, in a hippie way of like, wow. Now, really, because uh, I seen Primus three times this year, uh, once with Tool, once at the show we just did together in Columbus, Ohio, and then once in um, Austin. And each time I've seen it in the last year or so, I can't tell people enough, like, you've got to see this band. Here we are. What are we, 30 years later or something? Yeah, How many right. years? Uh, the first record that we, we recorded 88? in 88. Yeah, right. The end of 88. So, so, so wow, geez, this is crazy math. Right. <laughs> so when you think about it, it's just like, you've got to see this fucking band. Uh, just, like, just out of respect, <laughs> even if you're not even a fan, like, Oh, I better go see this. Right. Since it's been, at least it's been around this long, you might as well see what Absolutely. it is. Absolutely. It's like <laughs> it's like the Book of Mormon. Eventually, you got to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which you know that's one I mean? of the greatest things on the planet. Right. <laughs> and that's how I feel about Primus. You know what I mean? It was never a band that I was just like, man, I'm fucking hooked on Primus. And now I am, because back then I would, I would love it, and I would see you guys a lot with bands or whatever, you know, Lollapalooza or The Stone or anywhere I would see it. But now, more than ever, I really get it, 
Because I'm like, wow, these are three dudes doing some <laughs> shit that people aren't doing. This show you had on this run was blowing my mind. First set, you know, you're doing your tunes. Second set is the record, right. the new record with this crazy forest <laughs> and these badass shit. I love that That's stuff. That's good to hear because, you know, it's taking a chance sometimes, like playing your new record, the whole new record. 100%. <laughs> what what you know? But man, it's a, it's a, it's a journey. You know what I mean? As you're sitting there, it's not just a concert. It's a play. It's a con. It's art. It's visuals. You yeah, know what I mean? That's good to hear because that's sort of what we were trying to shoot for. Yeah. In some extent, so that's, that's good it's, to hear. And, and then as I'm watching you, I'm like, that guy was in Possessed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Doesn't It doesn't add up. Yeah, it's really wild, man. Yeah, um, well, I mean, and like you said, we've now that you've mentioned like 30, we've been doing this 30 years. I don't think there's anybody that's come along like, that does what Les does. No. He plays like him or is able to like, you know, I don't know how he separates his brain into playing the bass parts and then singing. Yeah. It's, you know, I've, I've never, you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like Jerry was a race car driver. Let's just say that song. Yeah. The riff is like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jerry was a race car driver. I mean, it's like the, the counter rhythm. In your, yeah, I don't know how he does it. I, I know. I'm always amazed every time I'm over there playing G, C, and E, <laughs> you know, living on Roca Drive. Like, man, you know, trying <laughs> That to sounds get, hard to me too. I yeah, can't do that. <laughs> yeah, trying to get my right hand not to follow the, the vocal. Oh, melody, yeah. I wouldn't you know? be able to separate those two. Fuck yeah, man! It's so crazy when you're now when you guys are writing stuff because, dude, like, there's not like standard. You're not playing like standard stuff. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So do you just he does less lay down the bed tracks and then you just start adding to it? Um, most of the stuffs that way. The this last record, he kind of had a he had an idea of what he wanted to do, so he sort of mapped it all out. So oh. that's why there's not a lot of like. Doesn't sound like a lot of jamming or improv kind of thing. Right. So this one was very mapped out. I, I came in and tried to like sprinkle stuff other kind of what you're saying. Right. You know, find this. Spot. So he had it all laid down. Yeah. And then you just start adding stuff in. Yeah, I try to find ways. How can I make this sound cooler or add right. to it? You know. Now, now, you do, when you're listening to it, do you approach it in a Zappa or Garcia way of just like I'll just get some thematic stuff here? And, I, I do. I t- always approach it like. My first thing is you say, how can I just make crazy sounds, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes I love like there's like talking head sounds where the guitar is just making a crazy sound. You might oh, even yeah. know it's a guitar, but that's kind of what hooks you in is the sound. Yeah. So. Yeah. A lot like Morello. If you listen yeah, to totally. Rage, Morello's not playing any. That's another guy that's not playing your standard just power chords. Right. You know what I mean? That shit is crazy. It's totally Or, or Wes Borland, you right, know? Yeah. It's like innovative. Like, how can I take this piece of wood with six strings and. Yeah. Make it sound like something that you haven't heard before. Absolutely. I, I think Wes Borland's totally underrated. Like, if he wasn't in Limp Biscuit, you know, like, you know, like, yeah. they're like the, it's popular to whip him down like a nickelback or whatever. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? It's almost hacky to a point now, you know. Uh, but that guy, you know, of course, he, I had him on the show and his favorite of all time is Les. Oh, yeah. That, that's his whole inspiration. So he approaches his guitar, and Les doesn't even play guitar. You know what I mean? But when you look, listen to like you know uh, some of uh, Wes's stuff, it's those counter rhythms and right. those beats on. And there. he's wearing a gorilla suit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just burning up hot. Yeah, I love that video you guys did where you guys were the Energizer. Oh my God! Fuck it, that had to be a nightmare to do, right? It was. Who came up with that? Uh, that one, well, I think it was actually Jimmy Iovine had the idea of like, cause there was a Duracell battery commercial. Yeah. That I remember this, that. Same like kind of effect. And he had seen that commercial. He's like, Hey, what if you guys, you know, use this sort of this effect for the thing? And it was the first time where I think Les was like, that's a pretty good idea. Cause no, normally all the ideas came from Les for the videos. It was like oh, really? vision and yeah. So this was one where it was like, he's like, that's a pretty good idea. So yeah. Um, yeah. So that, yeah, that was how that came about. But then it turned into the nightmare of the, you know, they got to cast your head. Oh, you shit. Know, we put, like, I think we had straws in our nose while the stuff dries in your head. Then they had to make it. Is it like, plaster? Oh, or? Yeah, it was like a, it was like, some kind of rubber thing. They yeah, that shit it makes to your me face. claustrophobic. Oh, yeah. Right? You just got straws to breathe? Yeah, I would definitely need a bottle of Xanax to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> how long did it take to do? Oh, man. I'm trying to remember. I think I geared myself up for being really terrible, so I... I'd set the bar high, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, right. but it, it was a process. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. getting into it was a process, of which I think started like 3 a.m. 
Oh, and to know, get into the costume? To get into it, and then you're in it all day. And I think that to come back and keep like gluing it onto your lips. So by the end of the day, you're just... How do you piss and shit? You don't? That's a good question. Probably, maybe you don't. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh, man. Some of these videos are incredible that you guys did, you know? And it's funny because when you read about Primus, the theme over and over and over, once again, MTV only showed it six times, right. you know? And it's... It's so fucking uh, such a bummer, you know, like because these videos are incredible. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, they weren't cheap either. So it's, it's hard to convince you know, the record company, hey, give us however much, you know, 100, 200 grand to like make a video. Yeah. And, we're, you know, we're and that comes us. out of your money. <laughs> uh, yes. The you record know? companies are basically banks. Yeah. So each video <laughs> you look at, you're like, well, that's a house in Katati. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, th thank God I didn't. Th I wasn't smart enough to equate the two at the time. You know, <laughs> I didn't have too many responsibilities. So I was like, "Yeah, let's make a video. What does it cost to us? Sounds like a lot of money." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's really what drew me in early on to you guys was, um, you know, uh, I love Devo, and their videos were so wacky you yeah. know and your guys's videos were so off the chart you know it's just like wow this shit is great right those two might have equated to each other somehow now that because their videos were sort of the same thing like, absolutely you know, crazy process or just weird characters like weird characters <laughs> like bougie boy and yeah. uh, and all that stuff you know now you're living in la uh but you grew up in richmond uh what year do you cut out of uh the bay area it, um it was right after 9 11 actually because i remember it because like I decided to move out and like, what made you move? Cause the city, cause the city has really gone through two phase. People talk about it now, but really, uh, 96, I think the dot com, that yeah. first thing really tore up like the paradise lounge, the DNA lounge, I beam was gone. All the clubs right, were that's gone. Right, yeah. Well, yeah. The only thing left was really like uh, bottom of the hill and slims and the, uh, the music hall, Everything right, else right. was just dust from that fucking thing. And then it kind of came back for a minute, you know, uh, San Fran, and then it's back to shit again, oh, even really? worse. Yeah, because of the, you know, the techies. All the right. Well, yeah, because I remember at one point right before I left, I was kind of like thinking, like, if you were a band starting now, where would you play? There's All these places are gone. I didn't yeah. even know, I had no idea how you would get started or what yeah. you would do or where you would go to see the bands. Um, for me, I think I'd, I'd grown up there. I'd lived there forever and just touring since I was 12. I was sort of like always used to being gone. Yeah, so we I think we had a couple years of downtime, and I was just like, well, and I think ultimately probably Van Halen. I was always had this idea of Van Halen is like this, you know, yeah, that's L.A. I wanted to go to be like Van Halen and live in L.A. and that's it. <laughs> be in a David Lee Roth video. That's so crazy because <laughs> when you look at like it, it's funny. Because, I'd love to hear that from you because you know there's these purists. Uh, back in the day, you know, like, you know, if you hang out with certain people and they can only like one thing, like if they're into Zappa, they're like fucking Van Halen. Right. Like they got to hate fucking that, that's cock like, rock. Yeah. <laughs> what a bunch of fucking garbage. You know, like yeah, they want to equate it with like poison or Cinderella yeah, right. or something like, no, I always tell people it's not the no, same. No, not even Motley Crue is that. Motley yeah. Crue was like a dirt the band. It was like great pentagrams and yeah. they were scary. That shit is great. Yeah. I, I had Nikki six on and it's funny. I, I say, I say, if you're, you know, like I love Motley Crue, those first two records are mind boggling. Yeah. And I love Van Halen and I love uh, GNR's first record. And I like the Illusion records too. Those are four records. That doesn't mean <laughs> I like the entire fucking thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like you're down on stuff. And people are like, <laughs> if you're into this, you ought to check out this. And you're like, nah, man, it's no, not the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the same. Uh, that, I'm like, if you're into that, well, you ought to check out Bone Machine. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, oh, what? <laughs> what, huh? But so you, you have that kind of rock and roll thing. And I did too. It's always, to me, it was that Laurel Canyon, Jim Morrison, and the Sun set strip yeah. of early on you know so you move here where do you move uh venice venice yeah which is not <laughs> it's not rock at all I, know. Well, the thing, I was i mean that's doors well, the, old days yeah because well, I, I grew up like on arena rock and it was uh, like you know so la was i mean basically it was just van halen it's always pictured like van halen in la but you know malibu or something and then yeah when i come to la i never really liked la that much because i wasn't a hollywood fan but right i love the beach area so i was like if i'm gonna live in la i, I don't want to be stuck in this like 
town surrounded by stuff. I want to be like next to the ocean where I, right. I guess where I feel like if I needed to get away, I could jump in a boat or something. Yeah. 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 Right. The <laughs> but, zombies come. <laughs> yeah. The zombies come. I can, I can go that way. I'm not trapped and they just all yeah. converge on me and uh, eat me alive. And so you're out there and, and, and what, what were you doing at the time? Is that when Primus takes the uh, hiatus? Yeah. This was, yeah, that was Oh one, I guess. Right. Yeah. That's was, after anti-pop. Yeah. So you're like, you guys basically that record, you know, uh, it didn't do too good, but I like that record. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's some, it's really bizarre. It's all over the board and, uh, I dig it. You That's, know what I mean? But yeah, I, it's a, it's a cool record. To, I think it just represented a time where the band was kind of, I think Les was feeling a lot of pressure from the record. Every time we made a record, the record comes to be like, oh, you should get a producer. Yeah. You should work with people. And we were so used to just doing everything ourselves with no outside influence. I think that's the one where he was kind of like, finally like, okay, well, maybe we'll pick a bunch of different people to produce a song each. So that's why we had Stuart Copeland yeah. do one. Yeah. And Tom Morello. Um, yeah, Tom Morello. Tom was Waits on is on there. Tom, yeah. Hetfield. Yeah, that's right. Hetfield yeah. and Jim Martin Fuck were on Jim there. Jim Martin. Yeah, that I mean, was where such the a fun fuck day. is that guy, man? <laughs> I know. You know and what I mean? I what miss a, that guy. What a crime! Outgrowing pumpkins and shit. <laughs> well, not just any pumpkin from my yeah, the biggest, like in the, the world. biggest pumpkin. Yeah, but man, I mean, I still can't believe that um, that Faith No More, as fucking great as they are, people keep trying to throw that record a day, a day in the life, or whatever the one after Angel Dust, right, down my throat, and I'm like, look, man, if you saw. Faith No More with Jim Martin. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere else. That's a, yeah. I it's, mean, the thing, for me, it's like my picture of Faith No More. It's like the, gla- the free Flying brothers glasses v. and the yeah. flying V. It's flying v. v. And I always called them the Sally Jesse Raphaels. <laughs> for, because at the time, she wore those glasses right, too, yeah. the big red ones, right? But he was one of the weirdest dudes I've ever seen around the scene. Him and Hetfield would hang out, and you'd be like, what is up with those guys? That's right, yeah, they're like really. nine feet tall. <laughs> they drink Jaeger. They're totally weird. Yeah, you know? they're like men. They're like, they were men, and they're yeah. only two <laughs> years older than me, and like four than you. But ben, remember when you'd see him out, like if you went to see Metallica and you went to a party after in Burke or something, they had like sideburns yeah. and old shitty fucking clothes. <laughs> Goes on, and they were scary men. Yeah, they were the real deal. It was so weird, right? I <laughs> yeah. try to describe it all the time. I'm like, now I see Hep Fett, I go, well, we're the same dude. Like, we're <laughs> right, almost right, the right, same yeah. age. We're both into Harleys <laughs> and shit. But back then, I'd be like, whoa, there's Headfield. Whoa, I'm getting away from that guy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and it was weird too because Faith No More. When I first heard him, I kind of they sounded more like a more of an artsy band to me, right. like a metal band. Well, they, we care a lot that era. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah of course. Well, I'd heard yeah. him. Yeah, because I that's the first thing I heard. But Chuck was, I guess, already out of the band by yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, and then Mike Patton. Then, comes yeah, in. Mike was in, yeah. and so that's when I actually saw the band the first time. But I'd heard the records. I mean, you know, I think when I first someone gave me a tape, it was the Chili Peppers on one side and Faith No More on the other side, and I. It sounded like shit because it was this crappy tape. I'm like, these bands suck. I hate them. What is this music? They give, everyone tells me so great. It just sounded, it sounded like so tinny you couldn't even hear it. But uh. The thing I wanted to ask you, though, is you're such a big Van Halen guy and, and, and rock and stuff. Was it like, did you ever have a, um, a feeling of like, man, I want to be in a rock band? I mean, because you're, you were really playing in the anti right arena band you know what i mean was it was it something that you did you like both or were you just like well this is what i do i think it was just like moving forward because i'd grown up on arena rock i didn't even know there was like anything else like theaters or anything like that yeah oh yeah right i just the only if, i didn't know that either yeah, growing there, up. I, there was cow palace that's it cow palace or yeah. oak and coliseum i didn't know it existed. It was like cow palace or the stone or or wolfgangs that's yeah, well, right even those were out of my reach i was like i don't know what those places are i'd, I'd actually won tickets on some radio station to see motley crew at the uh, old waldorf oh, oh but i wasn't yeah. old enough to oh, go so oh, i yeah. didn't go Oh, wow. Actually, Motley Crue's figuring in a lot of places here because the first time I went to a theater was they were playing the Warfield. Oh, Shout at the Devil. Is that what it? Yeah, it yeah. was Shout at the Devil. Do you remember what happened when they came on? No, but see, I remember all these things used to happen back then. People would tell me this. I'm like, I didn't even notice that. Did well, they had, they had seats back then still. Oh, is this Warfield. where the seats got ripped out? Nope, no. When they came on, they came on with the in the beginning right. at all man's time. So it's so funny that Nikki Six actually remembered this. So when they go to kick in, dang, 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 mixed guitar isn't on. <laughs> And it's just like, gah, gah, gah. so everything's loud, but Mick's just up there playing, but he doesn't know, you know, he, has, no, he, he thinks it's this on. This is in the monitor. 
Nikki told me what happened back then. They didn't have any, uh, like, you know, now you just, on the computer, you just play the intro. Right. You know, the drummer cues the intro. But back then they had the intro on a ghetto blaster. <laughs> So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So Mick Mars <laughs> took the mic uh, or the Mick Mars tech each night would take the mic and put it up to the ghetto blaster. <laughs> and then he forgot to put the mic back on. That's the amp. incredible. So he's up there rocking. So it's only stage volume, right? But it's not in the house. That's amazing. <laughs> I can't believe that Nikki six remembered. That's incredible that he remembered I know. on top of just the, the, the fact that they didn't just have two microphones, like one, they, they switched it. That's great, right? I, I know that was still that's like Spinal that. Tap, all of that. I know. <laughs> so, how great was that show? That show was great, and that was the first time that I knew there was other concerts besides arenas. Yeah, because well, we got to find this place, the Warfield. I'm like, what? There's no parking lot out here to hang out, and there's just a street, and you walk in these doors. Oh, there's a theater. I had like I was in the very last row, very last yeah, upstairs. Yeah, upstairs, yeah. You know, it's funny is I played that place with bad English as a kid. Yeah, and it didn't. It seem huge when you're oh a kid God, was, yeah. and then have you played it since yes you're like this thing's a cracker box <laughs> how small does this eat? you're like well that's the balcony right there you could throw well, stuff at it yeah well everything's like i'm sure if you went into uh the omni you were yeah. like oh my god it's so pretty, small yeah. but it seemed big it's I recently snuck back into the Cow Palace. Oh, really? Yeah, on a Sunday, me and my boy Fletch and Joey, we snuck in through a back door. Which is probably easy to do now. It was pretty right? easy, yeah. <laughs> there was a back door that was open. We just fucking, we were like, no way is it going to be open. And we jammed on it. It was open. We're what like, goes on in there now? Well, they rent it out for like rodeos and all that. Well, it is the Cow Palace. Of the right. But sound, they do like um, they antique fair right, right. and you know, motorcycle no show. No more concerts, as far as you know? No, but I think... And I truly believe, I think that like Metallica, Primus, Faith No More, maybe one other should do it. That would be amazing. Again. I agree. Because Metallica played that motherfucker like 30 times. I saw it all the time right. there, you know. It would be amazing if the three of you guys played that. And just brought back, a talk about an old school reunion. Oh my God, I'd probably... I have weird flashbacks. I like basically grew up at, you know, going to concerts at that place. Dude, I was 12. Right. Could be one of the it, venues are what our memory is, right? right? As much yeah. as the band, like everything you think about that venue of the cow house, it's cold, it's concrete. Yeah. It's the shitty weird side seat. And it's always foggy there for the, yeah, always fog coming <laughs> off that, uh, yeah. that daily city hill. Yeah. Oh my like when God. We used to go to the concerts at like 8 a.m. Yeah, and they and had we the were, drive in next door. Yeah, the drive in. Yeah. But we would sit there. I don't know how we figured this out because, you know, we wanted to get good seats. Yeah. So we would literally have our parents drop us off 8 30, 9 a.m. There's like eight other people in line. And we would sit there all day long yeah. until the doors opened at 6 30, 7 o'clock. And you'd be first. And, and would yeah, you get seats or 10. front row? We'd get seats because we were kids. We were too small. To right, right. Front. What are what are some of your favorite shows you saw there? Oh my god! Um, Did you I see think, Van Halen at uh, eighty four tour? Uh, yep, I definitely saw that. Yeah, um, I think the best one was Sabbath with Dio. Oh, that was oh, amazing. So, uh, oh, oh, I saw that on the holy uh, the uh, second record on yeah uh, Mob Rules. Mob Rules, dude, I saw that. They opened that was, up with the. Uh, the EB, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Remember how scary that was? Oh, my was? God. It, 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 that, was, that was so frightening. It was like a horror movie. Yeah, it really was. I saw Sabbath there with Ian Gillen. Whoa. And it, no tickets sold. Uh -huh. So all the scalpers came in, and there was a war on the floor, and a guy got stuck with Gee, a knife. Really? And I remember looking over, and this guy was laying on the floor of the cow house, blood oh my everywhere. God. Yeah, I never forgot that. Yeah, you wouldn't forget that. <laughs> we'll talk about ski. You're like a kid. You're like, whoa, that guy got stabbed. Holy shit, I don't think I would have ever gone to a concert again. Oh, man, I was pretty scared. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when you guys are jamming around, do you ever fuck around on some Van Halen or Motley Crue for fun? Uh, I don't think anybody else in the band has ever listened to a Motley Crue song. <laughs> <laughs> but uh let's would, let's would look at you like what are you what are you doing you'd be like what the fuck is that yeah 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 <laughs> and rightly so uh well this is the dumbest thing a couple weeks ago he was like we're like okay what should we do for the encore we always have this thing ends and we kind of go back there okay what should we play what's the crowd like yeah he's like oh just go out there and play eruption and i was like fuck do i know eruption You're, really i went out there and i just I, it was the shittiest version of eruption you've ever heard. In your oh life. my god! You, I gave up halfway through. You did? Yeah. Where then, was but that? But then at? the next day I went and I was like, okay, I got to go back and learn this. I'm ready for to do it again. Oh <laughs> my god! I wish you would have done that while Bill and I were there. We would have oh, lost man. our mind. All right. Well, next, <laughs> next, if you're at the next show, you're out. I'm pulling it out. 
Let, let's uh, so you moved to Venice and and the band's on hiatus and then what you play with Surge and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I moved to I think the well, I moved to L.A. I think mostly I just met my wife. Right, she lived in San Diego. She was on Prices, right? Yeah, I read that. <laughs> yeah, that was like a month after we moved to L.A. She just like, oh, my agency's sending me out on this thing to for be on Prices, right? I'm like, oh, awesome. Yeah, and I was just like, I don't know if I'm gonna get it. I'm like, oh, you're gonna get it. It's yeah, like, and she came up, I was like, I got it. How many years was she doing that? Six, I think. Wow, yeah. what a gig, right? Yeah. It was super fun too. It was like, oh, she's on the price is right. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine like uh like Vanna White. She's still on. I know. That's the gig, right? Dude, Vanna White and Pat Sajak, like uh, hats off to them too for uh, you know, in this age of uh of this world of aging people out. Right. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's incredible that they're still on and I love that. It man. really is. Yeah. yeah so you're living out here, and then what are you digging into? Like some mu- uh, like movie music or um, like stuff I, like that? You know, I don't think I was doing much. I actually think I was doing like electronic music. Me and my friends and some like the um, DJ guys from like Invisible Scratch Pickles. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, DJ Flair and uh, DJ Disc. We we're just making crazy experimental music with this band called No Force Field. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So, and you got a record out on that? There's a, yeah, there's a record out somewhere on Stray Records. There's two records, actually. It's just... And it was electronica music? It's electric, yes. It's like just weird electric music with like scratching and weird. Like what, rave stuff or? Kind of more like Prodigy or something. But oh, even, wow. Or like, it's, like, it's like a Mixed Master mic album. I feel oh, wow, like. that's great. It's, that. it's just random. Just, yeah. You know, and I think that's, I figured out why now. It's called EDM. Yeah. Because just electronic music meant like weird fucking shit that freaks you out and you don't want to listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they had to put the dance in there so people go, oh, okay, I'll, I'll listen to the, yeah, the yeah, EDM. The, I'm not listening to EM. Like, EM yeah, is fucking. Straight drugs. Yeah, yeah. Must just, have ecstasy to even have this on. <laughs> yeah, and go to like a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, man, there, there was a time in San Fran where it just turned to rave. Remember that? Yeah, totally. Like, like I think it was like late 90s. Rock was dead. Yeah, you would just see like lines of people dressed up outside of all these places. Oh, remember that? Waiting to get in like the velvet rope. Yeah, glow sticks and fucking (laughs) drugs. And then, and that's, you know, cause I moved to, I think we moved to LA at the same time. Yeah. I moved to, See, we may have passed each other on the freeway. Right after <laughs> September 11th. And it definitely is one of those things where you live in the Bay area all your life and you kind of feel like you hit a ceiling Yeah, and, and, and I looked at it as like, I could always just move right back. Yeah, but I that's what at, I thought too. I was like, oh, if it, you know, it's not just right down the road. Yeah. And I moved at 35 and people are like, well, you're crazy. <laughs> you should be settling down and having kids and getting married. Now I'm like, what do you mean, man? We got a ton of life. Yeah. Life. That's why I'm going to LA. I'm starting. It's the new start. Yeah. Yeah. So then you move here and you meet a, a, your lady and you get married and have a family. Yeah. That's that's wild, right? I didn't plan that one out. <laughs> I was like, we're moving to LA. I'm going to surf and then hang yeah. out at the beach and do whatever. And- Did you surf? I tried. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> what was it like playing with Surge? Because that's another band when you think about it. Every band you thing you messed with is totally outside the box. Right. Because that when you look at that band, it's four Armenian guys from Glendale. Yeah. You know, and 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 also hats off to like uh Jimmy Ivy and people that sign these bands. That, you know, which is a bummer about Interscope because here you are signed as this cool artistic band and then later it gets pressed on to like, hey, we need some producers and hits and everything. <laughs> like, I mean, that's- yeah, they weren't, they weren't that heavy actually because it was funny with Interscope, I, you know, you know, we'd always shied away from the big labels because we always heard these stories about what happens. Yeah. And to their credit, they really, we had a great experience with them and they, they didn't push it too hard, but I think they sort of always mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tom Wally signed you? Yeah, Tom Wally signed us. I don't think that he, he was always like, he was a giant champion. He was like, you guys seem to know what you're doing. It's working, like do your thing. So That's wild. He because was great. He, even Jimmy Ivan wasn't too, he didn't really care that much. I think that that was just a general thing they said to people. Maybe you should try a producer or who knows. I, I don't really well, know. Well, once you honest. get a hit though, then they're like, whoa, oh, they get a little sniff of some money, right? Well, and well like, the funny thing was, is Jimmy, we sat there in this meeting and he, you know, we were kind of a new band. He's like, well, here's how it goes. Like, you know, guys, don't get too excited because First record, maybe you'll sell like, you know, a couple thousand and there'll be like, you know, be 2,000 people at the shows. Maybe your next record, you get three or 4,000. And then, you know, you kind of build this so you guys don't get, you know, kind of gave us a, probably a, a responsible speech of like, don't, 
be like dumbass musicians who think you're rock stars and just fuck everything up. Yeah. Um, and then No Doubt came out with their album and it just blew up and they were like, okay, fuck that old plan. <laughs> you gotta sell 8 million records the first week or fuck off. <laughs> well, look, let's look at some of the early signings. You got Rico Suave that exploded. Right. You got Four Non Blondes, What's Going On that explodes. Yeah. Then you've got you guys and No Doubt. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. Marky Bunch. Those, so everything they had was exploding. Yeah. That, that's gotta be Which was great because they were a cool company. I remember like they first started Rolling Stone magazine had this article about, oh, Interscope, they're never going to make it. Like this is this startup thing. Good luck. They'll be gone in a year. Right. And you know, they weren't. Yeah, no, they weren't gone at they, all. They were interested in like, they, you know, they were interested in making it a cool label and having it have cool stuff on it. Oh, it was really cool. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, you know, Rico Suave. But well, it, nobody even remembered that. That was like the cash cow that let them sign whatever they wanted. Yeah, probably. Yes, I'd imagine so. Now, when we'll get back to the Surge thing, but when you guys are playing around in the Bay Area, how does Tom Wally hear about you and and... Where does he come see you? Like at the Paradise? Well, or Sli- this is the, the story I heard. Because, you yeah. know, they'd done this sort of seattle sweep through the Bay Area because there was this funk thrash scene. Oh, yeah. And You're so right. They, they came through and, like, you know, there was, there was all these bands, you know, um, and we were supposedly part of that scene, but... Right. And Psycho Funkopus. Yeah, Psycho Funkopus. Faith um, No More. Yeah, I think Faith No More wasn't... So they were, I think, already on their way. They'd been signed. Right. Not really lumped into that scene so much. And what else was there? Now, which is interesting, because when you think about Curveball, and then also, uh, you know, Freaky Executive, that's a whole different scene, too. You right, know, that like, was like the kind of princess... That was that was bizarre, right? That was almost like uh, dance. I called it Bammy's music. Well, that's why I didn't know much about it other than I'd see these bands in Bam magazine. Yeah, and they'd be, be kind of dressed up and like. That was were, a big era too. It, there's all these weird eras, like you got Huey Lewis yeah. and, and Journey and all these hit machines. And right. then and, and then you got Night like Night Ranger. Night Ranger. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But then you've got let's talk early on the tubes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you got, you know, uh like then it, it graduates into Credence. you guys. Yeah. Who's that? Credence is from there. Yeah, Credence. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much like different it's, shit. So okay, so he comes up and they're just signing everybody. This is the story I got. Yeah, they were signing. So he was kind of just I guess you know. Every, every like label guy was up there, and so I guess he was up there just checking stuff out, and happened to be walking by the stone. Whoa, the stone! He didn't even like go there to see us. He kind of just went in. What's going on? And we yeah. were playing. Yeah, and it was like, oh, what's this? And that's the story I got. He just was like, this seems pretty cool. That's what he told you? Yeah. Holy I think, shit! I don't know if he told me or I. That's that's what I remember from the time. And were you guys headlining? I don't even know. Well, Probably was, not. So what is it like? Eighty seven. <laughs> we haven't opened for Fishbone, I think, at that show. Oh, the, oh Fishbone. Yeah. yeah. So what is it like? Eighty seven. He just walks into the stone. Yeah, this would have been like ninety one, maybe. Oh, oh, it, the, oh, the major deal. That's yeah, right. The yeah. first record we did ourselves. Yeah. Basically, we made a demo because you yeah. couldn't get a gig without a demo. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then we were like, well, we recorded this demo. Let's just press it. Like Les was smart enough to know, like, well, let's let's press some, you know. I didn't think I'm like, okay, how do you get a record made without a record company? Yeah. All this. And he was kind of like more nuts about it's like, well, these have to get made somewhere. We call up a place, we get the records pressed, and we send them out to, you know, college radio stations, right. and we sell some to record stores. He's like, but you're coming out of possessed. You know the machine. You had a deal. Well, that's a th- yeah. I mean, I knew the machine. That's why I didn't. I how think, do you do it without the yeah, machine? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know any different. Right. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we put the first one out ourselves. Yeah. Um, and then the second one we got signed to Caroline Records for uh, oh, Frizzle Fry. Caroline. Yeah, they, they were, were the great. goth label. That's that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and they were owned by Virgin, right? Is that, I don't even remember. Yeah. Who was the A and R guy there? God. Aaron Jacovis. That's I think so. <laughs> yeah. I was so like not paying attention to anything back then. I was just I was so <laughs> dumb yeah. like about anything. I was like, I, I don't it. know. You're like the raw guy, like rock and roll. Dude. I really was. I, I didn't think I was. I was trying hard not to be that guy because I was so into like Zappa, who was like so together and stuff. But yeah, right. Turns yeah, out maybe fifty four was... albums out. <laughs> yeah, like professional and a businessman and yeah, yeah. yeah. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. So he signs you, man, and then you guys. Uh, where'd you do that record at? Uh, which would the well the first Interscope record yeah. would have been um well we made Frizzle Fry John with, uh, with the, with the Fisherman uh, oh, yeah that's that would have been Frizzle Fry, Frizzle Fry. We, we made that on our own and then sold it to Caroline oh I got you um and then so the next record would have been uh, see so, yeah seize the cheese that right. would have been the first which seize the cheese was kind of a metaphor for like okay we're signing a major label we're going into this world of cheese you know we're kind of yeah. getting into you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Not necessarily the mainstream, but we're in the pipeline now of how things are done. Yeah, you're in the, in the world. world series. Yeah. <laughs> did, did Interscope 
get to snatch up those other records from Caroline, like Frizzle Fry and the the the. Um, no, they at that point they didn't. It was just a sort of moving on deal, and then eventually we got those records back and put them out just uh, through a. You guys got to own all the stuff now, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think Universal owns all the Interscope stuff now. Oh, what? Well, well, I'm not sure. What was it? See, it, once again, here's like, my my yeah. wonderful business savvy mind. Is here. it a thirty year deal? How's that work? Like, when do you get your uh, masters back? Like Metallica got them back. Now they're just fucking kings. Oh, really? Yeah, man. You know what? Once again, I, <laughs> I, before I got here, I thought it was much smarter than I am. <laughs> I love Les you. probably hey, knows all this. You're gonna stuff. go. You're gonna go home. And be like, you know what? I gotta look into this yeah, here. I'm gonna go to my wife. Like, she's like, so what, what? How was today? It turns out I'm really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not stupid, man. You're fucking. You, if you've been in a band this long and you 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 are out rocking, playing in full theaters and everything, that's the that's the win. You yeah, know what I mean, it helps not to know any better. I got so surge. Yeah, how do you end up playing with him? Yeah, so Surge, I knew from one of our tours. Basically, we were kind of a farm league for bands that went on to get huge. Oh, yeah. So just one tour, they're like, oh, this like, band. Um, like Tool? Yeah, t- Tool. Well, Tool, we just did all the Palooza with, but we had like, you know, Incubus, all these bands. There's tons of the bands that came along to open for us, wanted to be huge. But uh, so one tour was System of a Down was open. No one knew who they were. We didn't know who they were, but yeah. they were cool. They were crazy. It's like, oh, this is a, like kind of a crazy band, like crazy music. Cool. Yeah. And then they blew up right after that. So I knew Sir, I met him on that tour. Yeah. And then, so he did a solo thing, and then he had some of my friends were in his band, and Brain, who had been in Primus, was yeah. going to play drums. Yeah, you, you know, Surge is just a, incredible also. Like, all this music is just so great. And and um, I, I'm just so glad that y- you guys get to still go out and play. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I really, me too. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. Tool Primus shows. Those seem to be, like, just the ultimate, uh, like, co-bill, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think for the people coming to the show, it was, like, a really a great night to be able to see both bands together and you know maybe a lot of people that were like eh, i don't know if i want to go to a concert or something like okay well i'm gonna go because i get to see yeah. both these bands well i don't know about tool but apparently everybody goes to see tool no matter what right um <laughs> the night i saw you guys was in san diego oh and it okay. was the night bowie died oh that's right because i remember driving home from that yeah. and hearing it on the radio exactly i stepped out of the venue because uh, uh you know maynard's got that no cell phone rule Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, I do know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was his rule, but I, knew, I found out the hard way that it was a rule. So I had my phone off the whole time, and then when I came out, I turned it on, and it was all these texts. Bowie had died. Oh, wow. But, man, what a bill that is uh, Primus and, and Tool together, man. It's just a journey of music. Yeah, and the, the opening band, I never this band Three Teeth. Or, oh, yeah, that's were, right. They, they were, were great. Yeah, they were great. Yeah, what was that? An L.A. band, right? Yeah, they're a Hollywood band. I think they're friends with guys in tool and that band guys. was they were, great they were cool now you guys just wrapped up this tour for the new record and are you still doing some more dates right you're here in la yeah two shows in la then our annual bay area new year's show yeah where are you playing the fox fox oh god that's gonna be great where are you playing here i'm uh, like will turn yeah i gotta go to that yeah come down Hit yeah me up. i'm gonna get less on the show but i'm nice. all uh, now are you gonna be doing the same thing that i saw that same format yep oh that's great yep. and it's two nights Two nights. Wow. Now, where'd you guys do that? At Les's studio? Uh, we did most of it at a studio. I did a couple of guitars at my studio in Venice, which is now a dry cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You got, your stu- you got a studio? I had a studio in Venice for like eight years, and then right before we... Uh, I Basically, I finished this record, and I was like, I'm done trying to keep a studio alive. And, uh, you know, Venice now is like Snapchat land, so it's just... Oh, God, it's, it's good. The it's, rent there. And there. Are you still yeah. in Venice? No. I just, but your studio still was. St- studio was. And oh, it, was, it was amazing. Like, it was a great spot for like eight, nine years. Yeah. Like, right off the beach. It was great. Oh, what a nightmare. Now what is it, like a law for eight grand a month? D- yeah, I don't know what the end of... I, thought, I don't know what it went for, but it kept creeping up every month. It'd be... You know, we should have just bought it back in the day, but we uh, didn't. Yeah, right? <laughs> Fuck. But, you know, it's definitely, it's not changed a lot. Now it's basically, it's you know, lots of people walking around with corporate ID badges around there. Oh, you know. So weird around it's there, so right? bizarre. And Albert Kinney, that whole street of nonsense. Dude, like when I first moved to Venice, omelet. like, yeah, that street, like, you kind of almost didn't want to walk down parts of yeah, that street, right? you know? Yeah, right? It's gangster. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, now it's just like, oh, here's a here's a shop that sells uh, vintage sewing <laughs> machines. Whoa, this is cool. Yeah, we've got four. 
four of them. They're yeah. ninety thousand yeah, dollars. Exactly. Like, what is this? Yeah. Man? Well, it got named the hippest street in America by you know Hipster Magazine or something. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This record, I love this record, and I. Uh, I got it when I was at your show there. I love the colored vinyl. It's so crazy. You know what's so crazy is I've seen pictures of the colored vinyl, but it's the, f- the first time I've actually seen a physical one. Oh, really? Because I've never opened up the, the record. I've, I've, oh, really? You know? <laughs> I love it. Because every time I listen to it, I'm like spending time like going over and making sure, because it's a little bit of a difficult record to play. Yeah, uh, in, in what in what format you mean is like uh, arrangements or what you yeah just playing? arrangements of my parts like you know sometimes you make these records and you sit in your studio and you come up with parts and you record them and then when it comes time to like put it all together like holy shit I got to play this now wow <laughs> that's pretty interesting to think right like yeah. you get it now also a big part of you like where I was looking at your pedals and stuff and also with uh, Les you got a lot of different guitars a lot of amps a lot of pedals. As you're orchestrating your parts, do you like um, audition a shitload of different pedals? Like, I'm going to run a pass and let's see what this is like with like this flange and this weird, you know, echo and yeah. this talk back or whatever. Are you doing a bunch of that and then have to go back and learn what pedals <laughs> you used and stuff? I kind of did. I kept good notes on this one, yeah. which is out of character for me, but... Um this is the first record I think we did where I was, well, I did some of the, we did this Willy Wonka record. And I did some of that in my studio, but this is the first one I did in this studio in Venice. So it was great. I could, I just show up like I was going to work and just sit there all day, like a kid in a candy store and just work on these parts and try a million different things. And, yeah. you know, it was kind of an excuse like, oh, this is my job. So I'm going to go do this all day long. And yeah, it was super fun actually. So yeah, I did spend a lot of times like just, cause you know, I spent years in that studio, like always, if I, you know, working on a film or something, whatever it was, it was kind of like, it was working. You're trying to finish something. This was like, where I could finally look at my, all my pedals and be like, Ooh, I get to like try everything and yeah. experiment. Now, if you go, let's say you could only have three pedals. What ones do you think it would be? Three uh, pedals. <laughs> three pedals. Yeah. Uh, well, probably you guys showed up right after I had those, these custom pedals made. For I saw your Robert own Keeley. pedals. Yeah. This guy, Robert Keeley is amazing. He's, he's such a lifesaver. I call, you know, I talked to me. He's like, Hey, anything in mind? So I said, Oh, what about this? This and he's like, I'll try to make that. So he yeah. sent me these pedals and they're like, I can't live without them now. They're in just Are they like combos in each pedal? Well, one is this thing. It's called a Bubbletron that he made. I've never heard this. It's a crazy sound. It sounds like bubbles. Um, really? Like, yeah. Bloop, 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 yeah, it sounds like... Bloop, 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 bloop. Um, <laughs> wow. So that's the one. That, it's like my favorite pedal in the world now. So he made me one where you could tap the tempo on it. Oh, um, man. So kind I'm just, like, it's, it's like, it's so addicting and it sucks. Cause after you're done with, it, you're like, well, regular guitar kind of boring now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like Garcia with the, uh, the, the what, Mutron. Yeah. The, what, what was the one he had? Uh, uh, what is it? t Yeah. 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 There are, are, are auto wall. Yeah. Yep. The yeah, all the three is the same. Yeah. Which I have one of those. It's super fun. Those are great, man. Except it's, for as soon as you hit it, everyone's like, okay, trying yeah, to be Jerry Garcia. Yeah, we Jerry. get it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, um, I think a lot of uh, that break that you guys took was probably really, really good for the band because uh, Les went off into that kind of Grateful Dead world. Right. You know what I mean? And that kind of brings people into you also like whoa who's this guy you know what i mean yeah and and because there are aspects i hate that term of like jam band because to me when somebody says that it usually means uh no songs yeah it means a lot of it it means yeah. so many different things yeah, you know, from like, like from like hacky just sack hacky you know, sack to like a, t- like a bar t-tie. blues band to like right it means so many things but the great thing thing about the jam band scene is it actually it kind of like here's all the people who like to go see music. Yeah, they yeah. love music. Yeah, and and that's what I love about that scene. And when you get, uh, and also I think it might have expanded maybe Les's mind of like, well, you know, because you know when you listen to some of this stuff, you know, uh, it it runs the gamut. Yeah, but, but we you kind of set it up that way till there's right whatever we want. Yeah, and then you, that's what's great. There's no uh, there's no like that's not Primus. Right. You know what I mean? And now you can do whatever, but it's great to be out uh, into that, grab some of those jam people. Yeah, that, that was great for us because it did bring a lot of people in that kind of would come there and tolerate you sort of opening up songs and experimenting. And yeah. as opposed to maybe people just wanted to hear like the rock songs and like, 
you know, there's still, I'm sure, plenty of people that are kind of like, ah, I don't want to hear these guys play a space song for 20 minutes or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, but that's the I thing. never you believe get in, in that. It's like, you know, you go see Zeppelin. That's a four-hour fucking ride right. in well, 77. Exactly. You know? That's kind of what we're aiming for, something similar. Though, I love you know? it. <laughs> Do the other guys get into, like, Zeppelin and stuff like that? Like, I can't imagine Les not listening. I, I, to me, I think he doesn't listen to anything. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he, he listens... I'm not sure what he, I know he's definitely, every one of the bands like into all those classes, you know, Zeppelin, yes, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Prog rock. Yeah, tons of prog rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's Now he's always coming up with these bands that he hears like on uh, XM and stuff, like some of the like, you know, some of the prog stations. He's always, hey, you got to check out this band, like crazy yeah. shit. So I know he's listening to, he listens to a lot of crazy music. I'm just assuming that's what. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as you can tell. Now, what, now. Okay, so you got three these pedals. Those are the three you could use. Yeah, it's a, it's like a tremolo, the bubble tron, and then this like. Tap, can can tap people delay. buy them somewhere? I think he may start making versions of these. I think so. Right now, what about guitar? Because you know, in the early days, you used to play Paul Reed Smith. Yeah, it was funny. I saw an old photo of you today. Holy shit, you look like a kid. <laughs> and you're playing that Paul Reed Smith that I saw at the show, the kind oh, of Santana yeah. yellowed yep. one, you know? And uh, I mean, oh, hold on, I think I got a picture. Yeah, right here. <laughs> like, look how long. Oh, my God. It, right? Yeah, I got my Sessions t-shirt on. Yeah, like, what year is that? That's, that's like, probably... Oh, that's, two, that's, that's 2008. What? I don't believe that. No, that doesn't that, sound fuck, right. No, that's wrong. No, that's, I think that's probably Lollapalooza. No, it's... I think that's when Brain was in the band, actually. That oh, band. yeah. So that's yeah. probably 99. Yeah, that's so... Look, look at you here in 98. Like, you, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, you look so, like... I don't even know. You almost look like you'd be, like, in a new version of the Partridge Family. <laughs> yeah, that was when I was like, you know what? I'm cutting my fucking hair. I think I shaved my head right before that, and that's that was what it had grown out to. What what song did you play on Meal Variations? Oh, man, I'm trying to think. I can never put these together, what the songs turn out to be. Oh, um, I got you, because they send it over. To, did that, you actually well, work with Tom? That, yeah, yeah, wow. which is amazing. Um, yeah. I th- well, that's that one's... God, what's on that record? What's he building in there? Oh, yeah. Uh, hold on, I'll give you the track list, because... Is that Big in Japan on that one? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm Big in Japan. Yeah. Okay, here's what's on that, which, by the way, there's a song on there that I could think, I possibly think is the top five song of all time for me and it's hold on hey, you gotta hold oh, on oh yeah hold on baby you gotta hold on what up that's a pretty good time oh, oh, man <laughs> yeah I, I i used to do that do that on uh i used to do this thing on the road i was called the tomcats me and ron uh we do stray cats and tom waits mix <laughs> tomcats black and old street cat sitting on a fence who <laughs> <laughs> Ain't got enough to pay the rent. <laughs> you know? That's a, that's a that's a pretty good band. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, okay, big in Japan, uh, low side of the road. Hold on, get behind the meal. Oh God, house where nobody lives. Cold water pony. He what's he building? Black market baby. Eyeball kid. Picture in a frame. Chocolate Jesus. Uh, Georgia Lee, God, a lot of songs. Oh, that's like a great album. Filipino box spring, take it with me. Come on up to it's the so house. So funny because all the Tom Waits records that you know now I'm in the age of everything is on my phone and just right. comes up alphabetically. So if it's not on those first slew of Tom Waits records, I, I can't ever remember what record it's on. Which yeah. is terrible. Yeah, and yeah. I do that with all music now. Yeah, it becomes a blur because it's just. Uh, I think that's the um, bummer of uh, shuffle. Yeah. Like I. I know music inside and out, you know what I right. mean? But now when I hear stuff, I'll be like, yeah, which record is that on? I find yeah. myself looking down. I'll tell uh, like, what's that on? Which yeah, is, yeah, I don't know at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where before you, like, you just know, you yeah, know, that's Van Halen too. Oh yeah. You're There's kidding. no way you don't know. You're not going to mistake anything. No way. You see the cover, you know, it's side. Absolutely. You know, what's what the scratches yeah. in your bird, your copy. What was your favorite Van Halen record? Fair warning. Oh, man, it, it might've been at, at one point. Cause that was the first show I saw was a fair warning. Oh, God, how great was that? That was amazing. And, and you know, did you go to the one? At, uh, I went to Oakland? Cow Palace. Oh, oh no, sorry, Oakland. Yeah, so Oakland. that's you know, there's videos. That you ever yeah, see? yeah, of course. This the is love. The, with, the, with the uh hear yeah. about it later. And that was my second concert ever. Oh man, dude, I you know that those I think there's three videos from that. But from what I've rabbit holed, they filmed the whole concert for MTV. 
Oh, is that what it was? Well, that's what they say. And it's like, well, where the fuck is the other well, stuff? There must have been a company or something around Oakland that did that thing. Because the week before was my first concert, which was Rush. Right. And there was guys running with cameras. And then the next one was Van Halen, guys running with cameras. I just thought this was what concerts were. There's guys running around right. with cameras. Rush uh, moving, moving pictures? pictures yeah. Oh, my God. You know, I hated Rush like I did the dead growing up. Right. And I was like, today is Tom Sawyer. <laughs> but now I'm... I mean, I, I think one of the classic mistakes I made was about five years ago, they did the to- the moving pictures tour again. Oh, yeah, that was amazing. And, and it was at Universal Amphitheater, and I didn't go, and I still fucking am furious to this yeah, day. Yeah, well, as that, you should be. You guys did YYZ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, what a great band. And that record, right? That record's incredible. And I didn't even know when I went to that show, I didn't know who Rush was. I didn't even know what a concert was. Well, you just went? Well, my friends said, we're going to the concert. We're going to go see Rush. And I was like, great. I don't know what a concert is. I don't know what Rush is. Right. I'm in. Let's go. And I was after by then and I was like, holy shit, I love concerts. This is awesome. So that's why the next Friday was like, okay, we're going to see Van Halen. I'm like, I don't know who that is either, but let's go. It's going to be wow. awesome. Wow. Yeah, I went to that Van Halen. It was three nights. I went all three. Oh, I, really? I got the dumb little necklace still oh, upstairs. Dude, that's the greatest necklace ever. I still got it in the bag. I ne- I had really? bought two, and I wore one forever, and the other one's in the bag. I got it upstairs ah, still. That's awesome. I looked on eBay. I'm like, I bet I could sell this for big money. I would have probably bought it because I think I bought one one time on eBay. Oh, man. I went on. They, <laughs> they awesome go, if I showed up. I got the third one right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they Somebody's making them now, so they're not right. worth crazy. Money. But I got the original, and it's still in the little baggie. That's like, like I bought a, a gram of blood. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Remember Gr- Malibu Grand Prix next to Oakland? Yes. Remember? Oh, well, I- that was the greatest memory. I remember coming out of that Van Halen concert, walking past Malibu Grand Prix, trying to find our parents to get picked up. And yeah. The people and they're cranking Van Halen. I was like, this is the, that's what made me love the whole Van Halen scene. You still go to concerts? Uh, from time to time. I mean, yeah. Just, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I always convince myself they're a pain in the ass. But yeah, when I yeah. go, I'm like, why don't I do this all the time? Right? I go all the time. And people are like, man, I can't believe you still go. It's like, yeah, I fucking, I got to be alive. <laughs> I, my new rule is if it, I've seen the band more than five times, I don't go. Yeah. Unless it's like, you know, you guys or, or Tool, right. bands that don't play a lot. Right. But like, you know, like, you know, GNR, I've seen, I saw him five times on this run. I was like, I'm good. Not going tonight? No. Are you going? <laughs> I think I am. You should go. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you, man. You're going to fucking love it. I would go if you said right now, you said, I got two, I got two <laughs> passes and it's going to be easy. I go fuck it. You would be like, I'm in. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm waiting to find out if I'm going right now. You're going to love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to love it. It's the last night of the tour, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I hear. Was GNR and all that, did you get into all that stuff back in the Bay Area? Like compl- Vane and all that? No, I completely missed GNR. I, um, it, that, when that came out, actually, Kirk Hammett, we were hanging out one night. And he's like, oh, you got to check out this band, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. No one had heard of them, so they're incredible. It just hit my ear at the wrong time, I think. Really? Because you know? I, like, I was way into like, King Crimson, like their, those albums with you know, the blue, yellow, and red one. Is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was a totally, so it, it just didn't even register me. It wasn't that it was like, oh, I don't like this. It just... I just didn't. Right. It's like me with like the dead or Bruce exactly, at some yeah. time. I'm like, you're just not ready for it. Right. And like then one day- like with Rush, there was tons of people I knew that were, they just, they weren't ready for Rush at the time. It just didn't hit their, you know, the, the yeah. vocals rubbed them the wrong yeah. way. Yeah. It was always the vocal. Yeah. Like to me, if I didn't like the vocal, I was out right away. <laughs> you know what I mean? And to, and also growing up in that era of Springsteen of Born in the USA, I was like, I'm good, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. that guy was so big, I was like, I don't need it, you know? And I was right. way deep into Metallica. Right there in this black box is the Master of Puppets reissue. I just got it in the mail today. And it's like everything, the demos, oh, it's all I've, vinyl. I've heard some of that. I, ju- I just got it. I haven't even opened it yet, but... How monumental was Master of Puppets to you? Oh my God, it was huge. It was well, the, all those Metallic albums for me. These were all like the next step in like the way things should go. You yeah. Know, as far as like a career and a band starting, because you know, Kill 'Em All was like this underground thing, and like they looked like weirdos on the back, and it was huge. And then, um, 
Oh, yeah, right. The lightning right, the came out. It was like, whoa, this is the next step. They, they stepped it up. And then when Master of Puppets came out, I was like, oh my God, they have just, how did they top these other things? And it was just like, this is like, this and those is what like, you should do as a band. You should move forward in this way. You know, it, it's weird is like, those are like dudes that we knew, or you you hung out with them a yeah. lot. But I saw them all the time at the Stone. And, and of course, was a huge Exodus uh, bonded by blood guy and, and a, a massive Metallica guy. And uh, I think about that all the time where, they're a lot like comics where you see these comics working in the clubs and then they go on the road for a while yeah, and they come back and you're like, whoa, they're like different that people. was Metallica. <laughs> they're totally like these, like, like they're beyond you. You're like, yeah, well, that's what they would do. They would go, you know, you'd hang out and be whatever, you know, you know, they're getting big and then they would go out like on these for like, you know, they'd go to Europe for like five months yeah, and they'd come back and they were just like, you know, just seasoned warriors. So seasoned. And, and, and now that you tour, you know, all the time, you realize yourself, right? When you see other people, you go to different countries and you, and, and you eat different foods right. and you hang out with different people, you really become a different person. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, isn't it amazing? Yeah. You've been around the world in Primus. Oh my God. Well, growing up like a Richmond and Elsa right. Brandy and yeah. stuff. And then Pinole. You know, yeah. Pinole. It's not like the <laughs> cultural center of the world. So yeah. you know, by the time you, you know, you've gone around the world and you you know, you're thrust into this. So there's no other way people in Pinole were going to go to Germany or like, you know, yeah, right. the Netherlands or anything like that. So you're kind of thrust into this and you really are just forced to learn about the world. But it's amazing what you get. Oh, yeah. You no, come it's... back as a Bay Area person, like all the people in the Bay Area are inside you now as far <laughs> as like the melting pot. Yeah, totally. You know, well, I got a little bit of Hispanic. I got some European in me. Yeah. I've got some Asian in me because you've been everywhere. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's, that's pretty. I never thought of that. That's yeah, totally true. It is bizarre. Where, where is Primus crazy big that you wouldn't think is big? Like you went and went, holy shit. Well, for a long time, it was Salt Lake City because they used to give you these breakdowns of like where you sold records. And right. Salt Lake City was always like miles ahead of everywhere else. No shit? Yeah. No, not a, I don't know what it is now. Right. But, um, wow, that's incredible, right? Yeah, it was just pure. I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't even know <laughs> Salt, why, but Salt Lake, I'll take it. The, you guys are the Mormon rock. That's right. See? <laughs> that's south who knew park. that south park has to keep paying huh yeah who knew Three people i didn't know, <laughs> you know but that, that's the most of the time if i meet someone they go oh you're in a band i tell them prime's like i don't know what that is i'm like yeah, ever seen south park oh yeah i know that song south park is unbelievable that and the simpsons right yeah like the simpsons is like as old as your band now that's crazy. Like when you think about <laughs> it, right? Well, yeah, because we used to go over to Les's when it first came out. It was like Sunday night. Hey, we're going to hang at Les's. It's Simpsons night. You yeah. Know? It was a big deal. It's like a, you know, destination viewing. It's pretty wild, right? Yeah. Dude, thanks a lot for uh, doing the show. Before you go, what guitar, if you could only have one on the tour? Because now you're kind of a Strat guy, right? Yeah, Strat guy now. The stra it'd be my number one Strat. That's it's like my sunburst Strat. It's funny because you, as you were showing me the guitars, you really, to me, it seems like you don't really even care what the guitars are. You're like, yeah, these things here, they send them to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's yeah. not like, you know, it's not like Jerry, like, well, oh, Wolf is the one a guy made me. And and Les's uh, instruments are all really crazy. You know, I don't know if Alembic makes them or what. But well, the ones he has now are he, his buddy, it's like his own bass that he designed. His friend, this guy, friend of ours, actually Dan Maloney, makes them for him. Wow. They're very custom basses. But with you, it's like, fuck it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean... Because, yeah. But why, there was one point where I used to bring all my vintage collection with me, and I'd have different guitars, but it was stressful. What do you got? You got some cool shit? Do you got I, any old uh, Charvels or Jacksons? Uh, I, I had a Charvel at one point, and I don't know why. I sold it to this collector. <gasps> oh, the San Dimas? I, yeah, it was like a, one of the star ones. Oh, this, awesome. Eddie Van versa, Halen. Yeah. That's Fair what, warning. Well, that picture of Eddie Van Halen with all his guitars, and he's got the pickaxe. I love it. That was on my wall, and I was like... This this is what I wanted to do. With the snake life. one right there. Yeah. Oh, that that's photo. That's what I wanted guitar, my bedroom to look like. Guitar player cover. Is that that's what it the was? guitar player magazine cover. No, oh, man. So you, you just started buying a bunch of guitars when you were a kid? Well, yeah. Well, uh, when we are on the road at one point, we'd hit pawn shops and stuff, and you'd score like some ridiculous 69 Telecaster for like 300 bucks because the guy didn't know what it was. Right, right. Now eBay is taking that. Yeah, eBay, yeah. Everyone knows everything. I but, used to do that with Blackface uh, uh, Fenders. Oh, see, that So I bought all off. these deluxe reverbs, and I'd come home and sell them oh in the city. God. It's a black market guitar. Oh, right. 
<laughs> so I'm actually making money on the road, but not from touring. <laughs> from buying from, yeah. pawn shops. Yeah, yeah. And now, That's smart. Now I look for other stuff. But, you, you know, I find, I go to stores and look for stuff. And, and look at my house. It's just a junkyard <laughs> of shit. That's some good stuff, it looks like. But you just find <laughs> stuff and you can eBay it, you know. And, right. uh, man, there's still stuff out there. But eBay did wreck it all. because People, people can like, figure out what stuff Looks like is. I got a guitar in my attic. It says Gibson Les Paul Custom. Let's look this up on eBay. 45 grand. Yeah, because well, yeah, back in the day, we'd literally go in these pawn shops. A guy would have like an old guitar. Yeah. No idea what it was. You know, you talk him down. Yeah. And then, you know, we're, I'd buy like a clarinet and you'd be like for 20 bucks. And like, let's have a case. They're like, I don't pick one. You go back there to be like an old Fender tweed case. Like, hey, can I use, how about this? Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Stick right. it in there. See ya. Original tweed case. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, so, I have so much shit like that. <laughs> now, oh, one last question. So, Wes has his own bus. He drives that cool bus he bought. Yeah. And then what, you and Tim cruise on the other bus? Yep. That's pretty well. We're on the boring bus, the one that's... <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, man. It's like, it's got, you know, it's really cool inside. It's like a oh, tons yeah. of character. Oh, I went in there. It's like a, it's like a 80s, uh, like a cruise ship. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, All right, you got an Instagram? I don't have anything. You, oh, I no. Got nothing. No social media. I'm one of those media. dudes. Yeah. yeah. Is it because you don't need it? You don't care? Or what is it? I just it? figure what good could come from it. Yeah. You're so <laughs> right, right? Did you ever have that shit before? I never had any of it. I know that it's like, you know, I should as far as like uh, being a professional or trying to further my career or some type of brand. Right. I don't have any of those things. Like, I don't have a brand or any of these things I need to push. So, yeah. I, 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 basically, I'm lazy too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do on your off time? Uh, you just hang out around the house? Yeah. Are you a TV on. guy or movies or what do you do? Not too much. I, you know, I cruise around, like ride my bike, listen to podcasts. <laughs> listen to, well, this is the only way I'll get time to listen to music. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go like cruise my bike down the bike path and I'll listen to music for an hour. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I don't really get a chance to do it. It sounds yeah. bizarre, but it's true. Yeah. You, what's your favorite podcast? You, who do you listen to? Oh, well, we're on right now. Oh. Talking about? <laughs> yeah. What are you, you listen to Marin or anybody? Uh, or Burr? Yeah. Well, Burr is, yeah. The Burr one is like, the, that's the funniest one by yeah. far. Like, yeah. It's just like, it's, that's the one where I'm walking down the street and people are like, why is that guy laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Acid or something? Look at that psycho. Yeah. yeah that's a weirdo walking. The- you do drugs anymore at all? No. No? No. Are you afraid of them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do acid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 How do you think I got into the Grateful Dead? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, it's, I, this music sucks. And then the first time I went to the Dead, and, you know, I was like, oh, wait a minute, I get it. Did you see him live? Yeah. Wow. The what? Dylan of the Dead show was. Oh, the you saw the Crown Jewel. Is that what? Yeah, it was It was amazing. At Oakland Coliseum, yeah. uh, Dan DeGreen. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So eventually I was that if you went to a dead show, you could find me if you just scan the crowd and look for the one guy who wasn't twirling. Yeah. Who was actually watching the band because he enjoyed the guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many times did you see him? <sighs> like 180. Are you fucking kidding? Well, I went through my ticket stubs at one point. I had like 180 ticket stubs. Wow. Yeah. Dude, that is awesome. All the, all the way up to like 90, what, 90, what 95 when he dies? Uh, uh, yep. Wow. Now, what eras uh, did you think were great? Because, you know, um, Phil S. says after the uh, break, you know, they took the break in the 70s. Right. They were never the same. But uh, Bob Weir says 89 was the year. I know? would agree with that. For me, it is, because that's when I first started. I think 87 was that Dylan show. And oh, there's yeah. like the, I think the greatest recording of the dead is that Live Without a Net. Oh, God, I love that. I got it on vinyl. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Because it's the one where there's nobody's really clamming on the singing. It's like, it's the most together. It just sounds great. The, now, if any of my friends that are deadheads hear this, I'm going to get so much. Wait, that's not 77's the year, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, it's funny because people, you know, they're like, you're crazy. It's whatever year you get into, I say. Yeah, the ones that you listen yeah. to, the, the, you know, they used to have the Grateful Dead hour up in the Bay. Yeah. I don't know how far that made it out, but I'd listen. So I'd. You know, that's how I got shows back then. I'd record them and listen to them. You'd hear some of the most amazing musicianship ever on those recordings. Did you see the documentary? Yeah, it's incredible. I like that one, but I think I like the Bob Weir one better. I haven't seen that. Oh. Is there something I don't know about here? Oh, my God. It's out on Netflix. I must be living on a tour bus. It came out last year, dude. Really? It's called The Other One. Okay. This is a must watch for you this week. All right. I'm I will in. quiz you later. <laughs> it's better. Really? Yeah. Well, the it's, other one's pretty long, too. It's long, but it's great. Don't get me wrong. Right. I love them both. Right, which can you can do. But I saw the Bob Weir one first about a year ago, and it moved me. Really? Man. It moved me because 
you know, the dead is all about Jerry, 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 Jerry. Right. But what about Bob Weir? You know what I mean? The guy wrote Truckin' and, and he wrote the other one. He's he amazing. A, he's amazing. The, the other one's probably my favorite dead song. I love that song. Yeah. And China Girl, you know, so, you know, when you watch the other one, dude, it's going to fucking rock you. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Watch it tonight if you don't go to GNR. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a very embarrassing uh, connection to that then. If there's shows back in the day, um, early primary shows, I'm wearing like cutoff jean shorts. Yeah. It's because I saw Bob Weir wearing them. Oh, <laughs> I love it. It's so you, stupid. Did I'm you, copying this. See, did you tell us that? Like, I don't think so. Because like, that's a great thing before we go. The outfits of, of Primus too, like, like, what do you wear? Does it matter? You know what I mean? Because yeah. rock is such a look also. Like, okay, we wear, like Metallica, we wear these jeans with these Reebok sneakers right. and a Sam Hain shirt, you know? Right, there's a That definite. was like the fucking outfits of metal, you know? But when you guys, did you ever discuss anything like that? Like, okay, what's our look? As corny as that sounds, right, no, bands happens. have those conversations. Yeah, what's our stylists. look? Yeah. Um, no, we never did, and I can prove it by some... Yeah, I was. Uh, someone was showing me. A, oh, there's the video from Roskill that you guys did back in the day. I was looking. I'm like, what the fuck am I wearing? I, I look like a. I don't even know. Yeah, it's the most. It's all thrift store clothes that don't fit. I look. I don't know. I look like a like I'm homeless. Well, I used to shop at Wasteland all the time on hate. And I always thought I had the coolest shit. Right. But when you look at it, it's all way too big <laughs> and boxy. Like, I've always loved, okay, I got an army jacket, the green one. I right. always love those, right? Those things are giant. All right, I got my Doc Martens. Now I got these 501s that are big old <laughs> barrely jeans, you know? And then a big white t-shirt. You're like, what? I look I, like I think a drug just, dealer. I think you just crystallized how... All, how every all my clothes came together exactly like that. Yeah. You pick it up and you look at it on the thing, yeah. and then you don't actually try it on most of the time. Go, this is cool, and then when you throw it all together, it's exactly what you said. It's all big, and yeah. The, 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 yeah, the army jacket. The army jacket was standard. You yeah, know? absolutely. And then I would go through these eras in San Fran, because San Francisco has its looks, too. Of right. Those. So the for Doc a long Martins. time, it's Ben Davis pants. Right. Doc Martens and a Ben Davis jacket or that, that Ben Davis shirt with the zipper. Oh, here. yeah. That was you, big in Panola. The, the pullover. Yeah. <laughs> the, pull, the pullover one. Ben Davis strictly. Then, uh, you know, of course, there's the Derby era. Right. It's just cords, like jean cords with the, the black Derby with yeah. the weird Paisley <laughs> liner. Yes. You know, you buy it out in Mission Street. And then later it gets into kind of the Lollapalooza era. It's shorts, you know, the uh, straight up Cornell look from Hands All Over video. Yeah. Doc with shorts and and then it gets into weird shit like you know almost gnr meets living color biker sh bike shorts <laughs> bike that's, shorts that's my favorite thing about that faith no more video the, yeah the, yeah the they're Patton, wearing, wearing the bike shorts bike shorts yeah. man it, that, that was a fucking look i know it was legitimately could be done wow man it's so let's fucking, hope none of these come back it's funny because now clothes are such a big deal to me that they have to fit right. You know right. what I mean? Well, you would think that would be the first criteria. Yeah, you just want to look good, you know, up on stage. <laughs> I don't want to be all fucking, you know. Oh, God, it's crazy. <laughs> Last question. All right. Have you seen Dead & Co. with John Mayer? Are you a John Mayer guy? Uh, have I? I saw, no, I haven't seen him. I saw him at the, I went out to Kimmel because my buddy does the front of house for them. Oh, oh yeah. My buddy uh, is uh, Sharuki was the monitor. Oh, Sharuki. Yeah, yeah. Remember him? He's the greatest. Yeah, yeah. He, is the, he was their <laughs> monitor guy forever. Now he's the yeah, tour manager. Truki's, stage manager. Truki's on tour with us for for a long time. No shit. Yeah, I knew Truki from. He was like he worked at the I Beam. Yeah, right. Right. The and then and then the Paradise. Yeah, he's the greatest guy in the world. Oh my God, he's the he's one of the kings of the dead now. I know. It's so well. Here's another funny thing. I went to see the dead in Vegas one time, uh -huh. and I was like. Like, uh, trying to find Sharuki. I basically there's sixty thousand people. I scanned the thing one time. The guy with black t shirt. There's Sharuki. There he is. There he is. <laughs> I gave him, him my apartment in San Fran when I moved. Really? He's still in there. Nice. To this day, and I've been here sixteen years. <laughs> so he. <laughs> oh my god. He's, he's not moving. Yeah. Oh no. Fuck no. Rent control. <laughs> They're not moving at all, man. Who's who would move? If you not got me. an apartment in San Fran or LA and you're under rent control and you move, you, you take should, it to the grave. You should have to be ejected out of California because <laughs> that's an art palace, an artist colony thing. Oh like, yeah, you got to be like, okay, look, I'm going to be living in Georgia, but you live in here. <laughs> 
for this seven hundred and eighty dollars rent. Oh my god! Secretly. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Go see Primus on the fucking road. Uh, two shows at the Will Turn in December, and then the New Year's Eve at Fox. That's got to be sold out, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, any what, what are the plans after that? You guys going uh, on tour or making a record? I mean, you just made this record, but yeah, I think we're gonna go maybe Australia, oh, and some places while while the weather's not permitting us to tour here and then we're putting together something for next summer with another band oh ba- oh who are, you can't say no nah, it's not it's still being figured out so i don't oh. know if it's gonna ha- happen or not but wow wow tool you think they're ever gonna put their record out <sighs> oh man well, i'm let's see, I'd see i hear i hear rumors about it all the time i'm sure it'll be amazing yeah right all right well uh i'm gonna go see you at the will turn i want to go both nights i'm Sweet. gonna bring down uh burr Let's and we'll tear it. it up and uh i can't thank you enough for doing the show for real i love oh. having uh i love your band and i love having guys from the bay area on man uh I would I would never move back because you know I couldn't I I, I can't <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah for the money you know yeah we'll is, pretend like we don't want to but it turns out we actually can't afford to move there well if there was a big earthquake I think we should move because then it'd be <laughs> rent cheap again all right guys thanks for tuning in leave a review and uh, subscribe and I would say follow follow on um, on Instagram but you don't have one I or Twitter or anything okay guys we're <laughs> out of here see ya. <laughs>